You're good. And then uh, go over here. And open that. All right, you should be live. All right. Are we? Are we? Are we live? Uh... Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, my, my Not seeing good. it yet. Not on this end. And then when you're ready to end, you can end soon right here. And through what? So when you're ready to end. Get a commercial. Okay. There we are. We're live. Ah, there we go. All right, everybody. Thank you for joining us today. This is uh, the Roll Call Podcast. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this All right, is, everybody. Did, okay, just a minute. It's all right. Okay, it's you, right. you guys got to tur turn down that, that, that uh, your device that you're going on YouTube. We're getting an echo. But the Roll Call Podcast, people. I want to thank everybody that's, that's joining us today on our live streaming on the Roll Call Podcast. I'm your host, Jerry Chacon. Um, from Arizona, USA, and we have a co-host, Daniel Foster, North California, USA, and our guest today is Kenny Tommy from South Africa. Thank you, guys. You're welcome. Thank you, Jerry, for inviting welcome. me. All right, Thank Kenny. you so much. Um, so you're, you're a veteran flyer from <clears throat> South Africa. Could you give us a little uh, history on, on, um, on how did you get introduced to the Birmingham Rollers? Uh, Jerry, let me go back. I started with my first pair of rollers that looked like, like rollers. Wasn't sure they were rollers. And my father bought them for me at the age of seven. And from then on, I had, I had birds that looked like rollers. We didn't fly birds. There weren't too many fanciers back then, you know, to, to have a mentor. You were flying these birds from home. Being on your own, if you have a friend your age, you might have a couple of birds. But uh, the Birmingham Rollers took off in South Africa, 1973, round about there. We had some top, top boys, about five or more, that went to the UK in 73. And they bought birds from the likes of Bob Brown, Ernie Stratford, uh, Ollie Harris. There were some blokes like Bill Barrett as well. Uh, Len Harris, Johnny Thompson. So those birds came in in the early Any 70s. The, I don't mean to interrupt, but the, the Bob Brown birds, now <clears throat> those were Mason birds or uh, do you know? No, no, no. Mason came after Bob. So Mason, okay. what I read, I, you know, I haven't been to Mason. I'm good friends with Mason. He got a couple of birds from Bill Barrett and then he got something from Bob and something from Ollie. And okay. that's what he said, how he started. Not sure if it's true, but that's what I know. Nice, and and I know I know that uh, I'm aware that that you came to the United States at one time. Could you give us a little uh, history on that? On 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 um, you know what you went through out here, going around. I I believe you also went to the UK, right? Uh, I no, I haven't been to the UK yet. Yet. Okay. okay. Uh, I befriended David Kowalski. I don't know if you guys know him. He's, he was from the East Coast back then. You know, he wrote yes, yes. A, a couple of books and so forth. I befriended him. He sent some birds to a South African in South Africa, maybe 1990. And uh, this guy gave our birds and a friend of mine, he said to me, you know what? Those Kowalskis, American birds that you always said you'd like even to have one, I know where they are. And we went off to the West Rand. And I looked at the birds, they were quite different. They were very different to our English birds, built and structure. So I bought those birds. It's about seven, eight of them that were still fertile. And then on the pedigrees, I got hold of David Kolsky's telephone number, called the guy up, introduced myself. We kicked it off quite well. And in 94, I imported, I think, 12 birds from him. And then we arranged Frank Baker and myself in 97 to go over to meet David Kowalski. That was on the East Coast and saw his birds and, you know, looked at the birds here, the Plona birds, uh, which he also sent to me. Uh, those birds were, were very good birds, Jerry. But one problem in South Africa, I couldn't keep those birds to a decent height. What I could do, I can even feed them individually on a teaspoon of grain and the next day they will still burn out and so, i had that so struggle they're, for they're skying out on you 
Yes, yeah. but they were they were exceptional rollers. No uh, uh, doubt about that. But you couldn't enjoy them for 20 minutes in your face. Mm. But I kept going for that decade because those Plona birds was at some birds of 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 uh, Belpensum, mm. Joe Borges, Bruce Cooper, mm. Chandler Grove. Those lo- those lines were in there. Very beautiful birds. Very good rollers. But then started with the World Cup, World Cup in '98. You know, uh, I couldn't take, I couldn't qualify or take place. Uh, yeah. The birds, if I, if they do fly time, they won't make 15 minutes, and it's a DQ. So uh, my eye changed from the UK to the guy in Holland, Heine Biker. Okay. okay. I said to Frank, you know what? This guy doesn't win the World Cup just by luck. He's been doing it more than once. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and and, and the scoreboard proves it, you know. And uh, another friend of mine is a he's a he's a minister. His name is Edgar Roscoe. Okay, yeah, I heard of him. Yes, I think he's lying third in the World Cup. Uh, Monty Aini than him. Yeah, and and he got the first batch in. Okay, I pushed him actually in that direction because I imported a lot of birds from 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 David Kowalski, Jerry Egan's them. We got birds. Paul Schreiber sent me some birds uh, at no cost, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. But uh, Jerry's birds was also good, but they were too deep. You know, okay. if you have them in your face at comp height and they close up there, they're in the tar road. Did you feel yeah. that that it, that um, the depth would cause the, like, the unisense in the birds' activity as far as uh, breaking? Uh, or, or it was like more... Um, more of a smaller break, or how did you see those birds? Okay, Jerry's birds were completely. Jerry's birds were completely different to the birds from uh, 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 David Kowalski. Okay, those birds were good kitters. They were the best kitters, but very very strong flyers. They were small and compact. They had narrow flights. You know, good depth up front kills, uh, seven inch ends. Seven and a half inch, close to eight inch cocks, you know, heaven on earth. Mm, yeah. But uh, but uh, Jerry's birds, three seconds, if you put them on a stopwatch, 60 foot. Yeah, yeah. 60 footers. And, you know, uh, I don't know, California and our weather is not much of a difference. But, uh, you know, we had to give up on them as well because we want to fly World Cup. We want to qualify. And if you look at... Heine Biker and some of the guys that, that flies well in the World Cup with the brakes. Yeah. Uh, it was a battle to get even five at a time back then. Okay. Five at a time. Uh, now you can get 10, 15, 18 busts. Yeah. But back then it was difficult. That's why South Africa had to change. All the Bob Brown birds prior to 1997, 98, the birds came in from Mason. The country is flooded with Mason birds. Uh, just to start to qualify in the World Cup with the breaks. Yeah, yeah. Those Bob Brown birds, no mistake, Jeff. The days that we flew them, we flew, we flew on the clicker system. We had a sheep counter. So when the birds roll, it is a break of five or eight, you get three points. The guys couldn't score you on the bigger breaks. And we didn't fly breaks. We flew on individual rolling back then. And because of that, all our birds started to roll individually. And when we came to the World Cup, it was a problem. Oh, okay. These yeah. birds, these birds were were selected for individual performance. Yeah, kind of like what we had at one time. We were so stuck on the on the depth, and and uh, you know we were, we were always breed for that, you know, and and it kind of yeah. set us back for a while, I think, or, or some of us, you know, okay. and, and we weren't looking for the. You know, oh. unisense, you know. So I know what you talked about. Yeah. We're getting some sound from some... Uh, yeah. Do I need to go upstairs? Yeah. I'll go up there. Hang on a sec. Yeah. Yeah, the, the girls are up there. Up and moving around. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So, um... <clears throat> so now... So now you have your your your, your birds working competitive um what's what was the next step for you guys out there 
okay most most of the guys now you know in, in so okay south africa is very competition driven jeff the guys are flying hard here if you fly in club competitions and you fly in the nationals regional competitions you know what you got to put up a kid there that can compete and you competing it competing with great guys that there are flying rollers exceptional rollers right uh, however you know the, the the judging has always been a problem you know uh with the waterfalls yeah. Uh, yeah all those things and i don't think judging will ever ever be to anybody's liking yeah yeah i know and we'll we'll get to the judging right now in a little bit um but uh mm -hmm. yeah that that could be pretty hectic in in, in different mm -hmm. thoughts of how things should be judged you know from different yeah. people but um are, are you are you when does it when does uh okay like when, when does your breeding season start over there for you okay we are in summer now you know oh, okay the peak of summer peak oh. of summer now uh our our winter ends in 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 our autumn starts in in august and 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 i used to breed in winter months but you know it's so damn cold with the frost that we have here it's different i think the cold is different towards the countries with the snow uh you know you come from work or in the evenings it's so it's it, it's minus five degree or minus two degrees the end gets up from the eggs you know so yeah. i changed that i started to breed in uh, spring the break of winter spring started to mate i breed three months i have my babies right now i've got two kids up that i've already bred i'm done with breeding so this is but some guys are still breeding this time of the year it's very hot to breed december and january our temperatures are in the 30 degrees over here celsius okay all right but yeah um, we, we breed uh, uh, and and um, what? How how many breeders do you breed off of that you feel that uh, you know it keeps you going as far as how many offsprings you need to keep your your program for the year going? Jerry, I'd like to breed with twelve pairs, but uh, we imported. Okay, three shipments came from Aini Baika. Uh, Two thousand and two, the first shipment. Uh, Edgar gave those birds up and he gave them to me. And I started in 2002 with those birds. And round about 2004, I think Frank Baker, he then imported uh, also a 12 bird. And then after that, another 12 bird, because the first 12 bird had Newcastle disease. Many of those birds died, you know, so a lot of things went wrong. So he got another shipment in. And since then, we are only breeding with the, the Heine Biker birds. But going down the line now, 2002 to 2022, I'm 20 years with, this bird, with these birds. I haven't crossed them out. But what happened in the process, I was, what, I'm now seven years retired. Prior to this, I was a very busy man. I had, flew overseas every month. There wasn't much time, but I had a helper to feed the birds. When I'm home, I fly, but you you, you can never do well if you don't fly your birds the whole month or every day. It's a problem. Right. So, so yeah, uh, my, my family comes down to about seven of the Heine Biker birds. Only seven. Okay. And, yeah. And then, and okay. then so, so you, you say you, you don't cross, you just keep them pure? Yeah. Uh, I always have a, a question. Why do you need to cross? What are you looking for? What right. do you want to achieve? What is wrong with the current family that you need to cross with? Okay. Right. Is there weak birds that you have that you want to make better? Get rid of the weak birds. Get better birds. You don't need to make the you don't need to steal from Peter <laughs> to pay Paul. Yeah. You know, it's, to me, it's a waste of time. Yeah. And you yeah. know, and so, you know what? Uh, that that's good yeah. to know because I'm I'm you know, I, I keep I got a I got a couple families that, that I'm messing with and 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 I've tried and I'm just just for curiosity, try to cross and see what I and, and you know it could be a waste of time. Who knows? But <laughs> maybe you're right. You know, you, know? <laughs> you know, Jerry, if you want to bring in a cross, you got to have a game plan, right? Because yeah. now you're bringing something, maybe one bird into your family. What does this one bird have that can better your family? Depth, quality, size, good flying, kicking frequent uh, uh, frequent rolling so it's those things that might be your birds lack right. but 
But if you want to start off, I mean, I think you've still got a lot of years to go. I don't have many years left yeah. to start now with crossing <laughs> and all those things, man. Jerry, yeah. I've had my days. You well, you know what it is? Many of us try to uh, 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 create a strain, you know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. you know, and, and, and just, just curiosity, you know, is what, mm. what hits us, I guess, you know? Uh, you know, sometimes with these crosses, you breed exceptional so rollers. Kenny, um, yes. um, you said you you kept you kept seven seven of the biker birds. Now, how how many how many of these uh, biker birds did you fly out? I did, I missed that part. Uh, did I fly? Uh, we, as I said, three shipments came into South Africa, and we since two thousand and two we bred with them, and we flew those birds. Yes. And was it a battle? Let me tell you. First five years, I could not get these birds to perform on the day of the competition. I couldn't switch them on. It was a battle. What, what were some that. of the things you had to go through? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. These birds are very disciplined birds. Very good kitting. Once you've done your preschooling with them, you put them up for the first two months. You fly them and you get your time right and your height right then that's set in those birds. You can let them sit a couple of days after two months up in the sky, they will still go back and fly. But it was all about breaking and rolling. And they would break, Jerry. They would break unbelievably, World Cup score. But when there's nobody around, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And that happens, that happens to all of us, let me tell you. <laughs> come competition day, you, 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 you feel on your, yeah, you fell on your face because <laughs> you know what? <laughs> and, and, and what I do for the last 30 plus years, I have diaries. I keep every year a diary for the kid birds, the time I fly, the height they fly, the performance they do, and the feed I give. If I treat them for medicine, it's all in those diaries. Nice. Not that yeah, I can go back to 15 years ago diary and wow. page through it nice. and find all the performances see, there and see what did I do here so, the last so seven Kenny, days. Kenny, uh, those yeah. seven you kept, you by chance, did you keep any red models or any white birds? Okay. Uh, they came in all colors, but uh, Frank Baker br brought in one red model. And... The first lot that came into South Africa, there was a red model there. We call them red spangles. Mm. And I took, I took sons and daughters of Frank Baker's red model, and I took sons and daughters from my red model, but we had one common denominator. I used one black ball in with the two cocks. You see what I'm... So they yeah. were all related. Oh, okay. yeah. And I yeah. took those, I took those offspring, the good ones, and I started with them, fly them out, Good kitting, good roll, good quality, and I built slowly. I mean, it's 20 years later. You know, it didn't come easy, but my 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 selection is very strict. You know, Have a bird that rolls and leave the kit or turn right or left, you know what, is out. But these birds don't do that. But now that I can see the true biker birds in the air, what Heine biker sees, they can fly, they kit, they fly the pattern eight. They fly very slow, and as you know, if the kid flies fast, they're not going to break. The birds that break from the back will have to run after the kid when the front right. birds are already going one way. Uh, you've got to get your kid birds on the same page. Have, have you ever flown those birds with another family to see what, what kind of chemistry they have? Uh, yes, I did fly them, you know, and uh, also I'm, I'm to, with the mason birds. Okay. Uh, I had them early 2002 Mason birds, but uh, the problem we had, and I don't know if you actually this on, on this, the Mason birds were flying too low and they were flying on one wing. Hmm. Now, if I see a kit that flies on one wing, I leave and I go sit down and I go eat something. I don't want to see that. <laughs> I had <Yeah>. that. <laughs> I had that with the Plona birds. They were birds that flew on one wing. Yeah. yeah, do you do you I think do, do, do you think there's something that you could do to regulate that to uh, maybe something that you you uh, yeah. um um maybe with the feed that you could apply to them or rest or fly more? What what is it you think that could you help can, out? Jerry, with my experience, you can do nothing with feed 
when those birds are flying on a wing, I tell you that. You can do nothing. Those birds are genetically produced that way to fly on the wing. What the guys are doing with the Masons here, that's so well, like Poon Shabodin and, and, and Rian Kruger, them. Rian Kruger, Kruger is one of, yeah, I think he came second in the World Cup uh, 2019 uh, when Graham Dexter was here. Yeah. Uh, he's done a three way cross, and most of mm. these guys are flying the three way crosses. Mm. You'll see there's a there's the Mason, there's a Bazans, and Rian has got the Dexter in there, and that sort of sorted out that one wing. They flying a pattern okay. eight. Yeah. You so see. so do you so so you saying that that in like uh, like you say you don't cross your birds, but in some cases maybe a three way cross will work out. Uh, I mean, where you could bring in birds to fix the problem. Jerry, I I don't yeah right now I don't see any problems. The, the one problem that I see now. In the beginning were these seven birds, not the seven birds, all the biker birds. They took a long time to come in, you know, maybe mm. eight months, sometimes the yeah. following year. But it's not like the old timer says from the UK, the second year is your best rollers. Uh, they were stubborn birds. That's why we could not, myself and Frank, on the competition day, we couldn't put a kit that everybody could enjoy. If you fly them the next day, you have all the breaks. <clears throat> now they were they had we call it a switch. Uh, Frankie and I, Frank Baker, we are friends, I think forever, you know. Uh, and uh, we are the only two guys here in South Africa that flies these hiney birds. How's the uh, depth on them versus so, versus the the Mason ones that you seen over there? Yeah, uh, the, you know the some of the masons that I see, you know, there's not much of a difference in depth. You know, as long as they are not shorter than 15 foot. So, if they are short, so Kenny, yeah, I short. got a question for you. How how long does it when you have these put your biker birds put away? How, mm. how long does it take take for those birds to be on fire? You know, to hit their peak point from when you get them out. How after the molt? How long you're looking at? Are you talking referring to after the molt? Yeah. So say springtime comes and you get them out to, to for yeah. competition. Uh, does it take 15 days? Does it take 21 days? What you know? What are we looking at on those biker birds? You know, the second week. Second. The week. second week they starting to smoke. So you're, I always, you're nine yeah. to 15 days then. Yeah, but those are old over kids, selected birds. Uh, my my A team are flying seven years. I don't change any birds in that kit. They stay together. They know one another. They have their yeah. positions on the perch. They have their positions in the sky. Nice. And these birds, they give you those explosive breaks. They fly okay, straight. Now, so so when do you start seeing them deteriorate? Uh, you know what I mean? Where when do they start going back down the curve? Uh, 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 uh. They actually don't go go down the curve, you know. The more yes, they can yeah. go, but seldom. If you fly them every single day, you don't fly rolling kits or A yeah. teams that are good teams every day. Right. Yeah, we'll get those birds. Okay. Yeah, go, go ahead. Sorry for interrupting. Yeah, those birds have been selected. You know what? They fly as a team. You can trust them. They, you will never find one out bird in them. That's the selection. So, okay. if you fly them. Out of seven days, five days out of seven, you know, every day you will see a performance. Nice. This is how these birds are are bred. We we're gonna we're gonna get into deep into the your your competition birds and and your young birds right now. Um, I kind of wanna wanna touch base more on the breeding what you got going on, and yeah. uh, so um, um, I I got a question. Uh, since your birds are you say your birds are pretty uh, um close and have that nucleus to where they're, they're mm -hmm. very related yeah. do you yep. do you practice uh, um individual breeding or open loft with those birds in, in your breeding program jerry i've okay i've done individual breeding for many years but right now you know my back and my knees individual breeding is a lot of work okay because my nucleus is so small it's seven birds uh I don't see different colors coming out as if the pair is red and black, I will get either the end of a cock that goes with the colors. So if it's overcrowded, a breeding, a overcrowded breeding loft, you'll have a lot of cross-threading. 
Yeah. But if you have six pair on one side and six pair on the other side, you know what the birds and these birds are also very calm. You know. Uh, yeah. And and then yeah. how often do you uh, 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 bring in a, a a bird that you've flown and proven to either substitute or just to to introduce into your breeding program? I mean, do you do you bring something yeah. in every year or do you do you work with the same pairs? How how how, how do you work that? Okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't work with the same pairs, but I've got enough uh, uh, cocks and ends. And usually I don't use all of them one year. I use this year, I have a 10 year plan with my breeding pairs. If I have a cock and a hen that's good for the breeding pen, yeah. before I put them to stock, I will breed from then. After breeding, I'll put them back in the kit. So the, these birds can go back in the kit after okay, breeding. They go back in the kit. Well, yeah. what, what's the what's the um, uh, time period that you give them to prove themselves? I mean, would you stock something the first year if it's outstanding, or or do you go by a certain time that that you introduce them to the to the? Yeah. Do you wait for them to mature at a certain age, or what do you go by? Gary, I've seen. I think you guys have seen first year birds that are phenomenal. Second year after the mole, they turn out to be trash or even better. So <laughs> you've got to fly, you got to fly those birds two years, three years. I've got a seven, I've got a, a hen kit flying seventh year now. Okay. The wow. same, same birds. And they perform every year. They don't go seldom. Okay. And do you, do but, you breed? Do you breed? Um, like how how do you select your breeders? I mean, is it just from the air or if they, do they got a a row of certain types uh, are there certain size to size or what is there anything else other than performance that you look for to pair up a bird or a pair definitely definitely you know uh, i like the hens to be seven inch long from uh, head to toe. how i met how i measure that yeah i yeah. put the bird against my chest and from the chest to the end of the primaries okay with my forefinger, that's about seven inch if you put it onto the ruler. Yeah, so you put okay. it right here and... Put it right, finger. put a hand here. Yeah. Yeah. Chest is the side, yeah. tail is that side. Yeah, yeah. Put a finger here, put the forefinger at the back of the flights. So your, your hands are seven inches. Seven inches, the forefinger to the thumb. Okay. If you stretch it a bit. Okay, like that. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah if you see. Okay. Uh, the, 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 the number one priority which I select, you know... Uh, Two inch kill, number one. Okay, two inch? Two inch kill. I have three ratings of the depth up front of the kill. I've got just normal depth up front, which I will say it's the, it's, 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 it's the lower one on the, on the three scales. And then I've got good depth up front. And then I have great depth up front. Now that already tells you there's a big difference between depth up front and great depth up front. So what do you mean by that? Do you, could you explain it? If you, I should have had a bird here now. Okay. If I hold a bird in my hand. Yeah. The bird is facing me. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. My, my thumb is on the back of the bird. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, and, and my fingers, especially those two fingers, yeah. they, they are touching the front part of the kill. Yeah. So okay. Like these can two you fingers see what right I'm doing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. You got to right. go up so, a little, a lo up a little bit. Right? How's that? Yeah, Can yeah, perfect. That? Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Yeah. So this is the, these fingers are on the bottom uh, on the kill, and this is on the back of the bird. Yeah. Okay. And this, yeah, yeah. And the size between the thumb and these fingers, that's the depth up front. Oh, okay. And what fingers okay. is it? This one or the two? No, no, no. The the, the middle two fingers. Oh, the middle two fingers. These. Yeah. Can like, you so see you're, that? You're holding it like that. Yes. Like I'm that. Exactly what you're doing there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. And, you know, sometimes I don't need to, to, to handle the bird at my chest. When I just hold the bird, I can already feel that this is a great spinner. Oh, and okay. those birds, those birds, Jerry, I've seen over the years, the great depth up front. In other, another way to describe that great depth up front is a wedge body. Okay. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying now. You see, from the keel, it's a pointed part. That's yeah, a point, yeah. the, 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 the point of the, of the wedge. Okay, okay. Are, are the wedge in the back? Yeah. Okay. C can you see my hands now? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Right. The bottom part is where the keel is, and, and that's the wedge body. So the, the okay. frame of the bird. 
the frame the frame skeletal yeah. structure yeah nice right. nice here yeah that that that's awesome i never i've never uh looked into that i mean i i i i know about the kill and all that but but um yeah i like i like to uh get deep into that because it's not all about selecting from the sky i think you know um but so what other things would you say that's important okay the two important parts the, the okay the feather quality must be there the size of the bird is there okay right the kill depth up front is priority and the second part to that is the tail flex and your tails need to be very narrow no broom you know yeah, i call yeah, them yeah. a broom tail that white tails we don't want that if you if you hold the tail and you press it together it becomes a one feather tail yes yeah yeah right uh, many, many of those plona birds I used to call them spoon tails because if you press press the tail in the center, it closes in the center, and at the back is like a spoon. It opens up a bit. Oh uh, yeah. Did you, yeah ever, okay. did you ever see that? Not, no, you know what? I'm, I'm I haven't I haven't. I mean, I've tried it where I grab the wings and and let the tail rise and it, mm. see it close and the more narrow. That's oh. what I kind of look at, at at times. But I, you know that makes sense. Uh, well, why would that? Why would that be? Is that is that because of aerodynamics somehow? Yes. Well, yeah. It's it's. You see, st strains don't roll, Jerry. Name brands don't roll. It is the structure and the build of the bird. If a bird, if the the long cast pigeons, you know, they're a little bit long. You know what? Yeah. It, it, it it's not balanced. They're not balanced. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. When when the biker birds came in, they were those big birds, the eight inch birds, eight and a half inch birds. And I said with that problem without having to cross to bring those birds to what they are today is selection. If if a bird goes into so, into so a row, hands are they seven inches? My 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 top of my forefinger and the end of my thumb that's seven inches. Okay, yeah. your hands are that size. Yeah, that's seven inches from here to there. Okay, it, it, it's about right. Yeah, it's about seven inches. Yeah, if you look, if you at, look that, at it okay, like I'm, that from here, I'm stretching it. Seven yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm that's a pretty good size. That's see? a pretty good size hand. Yeah, I've got I've got quite small ends. I don't have very big ends. So this is how I select my birds. No, you know? your hens. Your no, hens. Yeah, I'm saying the difference between a cock and a hen. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what 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 uh, what a uh, um okay? Explain to us what what is feather feather quality for you? Okay, uh, you know what tight feather. It's it's like an athlete. If I give you an oversized pair of, of jeans and a big jacket and I wear a tracksuit and we <laughs> run along the line, you know what? You're going to trip over yourself with those big feathers of yours. Yeah, yeah. I call them parachute wings. Yeah, Good yeah. Good feather, narrow primaries, short secondaries. The shorter the secondaries are, you can see the hole from the side. If those secondaries are long, you will wait forever to see the hole from the side because when the bird goes into uh, into the roll, it's an outward thrust of the body. Okay. The wings, one upstroke of the wing, one downstroke of the wing gives you one revolution. So, so you're what saying that the secondaries they gotta be uniform. They gotta be shorter. Yes, they gotta be shorter because if they are too long, when you take the bird, Jerry. And you tilt the bird upside down in your hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that the head can tilt back yeah. and the tail can. So that tail must actually touch the head of the bird without any strain. That is good tail flex. Nice. You don't force the tail. So, so you saying, uh, um, okay, having the feather quality will show the tight, more tightness and and the hole in the bird. The, the feather quality will make it easy to cut through the air. That's, okay. that's what the feather quality is for. The mm. hole in the side is the depth up front and the flex of the tail touching the head. Okay, and the depth up front, yeah. Okay. Yeah, right. So behind the head and the tail, yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a triangle hole there. It's yeah. a triangle. It's not a round hole. But with the speed of the spin, that triangle hole becomes a round hole. Now, I'm sure you've seen birds... When you look from the side, the hole, can you see my hand? Yeah, 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 yes. Right. It's not close. It's got yeah, a gap. Yeah. You know yeah. why that gap is there? What? Because the tail is not touching the head. The bird can't do that. Well, that is that, that is because what? it's a longer casted bird? 
you got to look at your, your your tail flex the tail flex oh the tail flex okay. yes yes okay yeah, your yeah. tail if the tail if the tail cushion is too thick that tail can't bend yeah if the tail cushion is too thick but you got to breed them into the bird so that you can have naturally good tail flex i have in my in my stock book each and every young bird that i fly i make a remark there the great depth up front or good depth up front and the tail flex is it a one a two or a three you when see? do you, when do you when 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 do you recognize or or see the the all these aspects that you're talking about right now do you need to wait for the the birds to be mature to see that or 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 you see no, it right away I, you can see it once you've weaned them and their flights are grown out you can handle them and then you can select from there and say right these birds are the better birds than those ones over there okay now um on the breeding do you breed uh uh do you, do you keep it um do you practice inbreeding line breeding what what, what is yes. your breeding program like definitely very st very strong on line breeding line breeding. breeding back uh, i've got my two red models foundation cocks then i have one white cock which is a bulbarrot from hind and those are the three cocks that runs throughout my loft today with a couple of hens. And what I've done, I created three strains without one, one family. When the birds came in, there's mm. no pedigrees, nothing on these birds. And I had to start my own pedigree. I, I mated the birds up and you didn't know whether you was mating brother and sister. We just mated up and oh, that's, yeah. okay. that was the long, long, long wait in getting to where I am today to start to get the pedigree on the bird from the kit and then starting to, to breed and pair it up to birds that you've also bred. Yeah, yeah. You got mm. it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the the bite, we ha we've had two, two big... Uh, biker imports over here and um i think it was the first batch we had a red model hand and then um one of her sons was a producer also and i believe they bred they bred um that cockbird back to his mom and got some whites out of it that's why i was asking if your red models and your whites were your best ones over there because they're definitely the best ones on this side yeah, uh, let me, they were not only the best because I, uh, we brought in uh, some black balls. My, my foundation hen of my whole loft is a black ball hen, one hen. Okay. That's what I used. And then there was another two, three hens that I used with the same cocks. Yeah, I, I, you... ha that, I have one too. Yeah. Do you? Yeah, yeah. That, black, so... that, that black badge that came over here, he was a really good producer, but I can't, I can't get my hands on any of that. But I did, I did get a hold of another red model. And now I'm starting to get black models somehow. Which is good. Now, the black models go back to the white birds because the white birds come from the black models. The original Bulbarrot birds that I think this guy got was the black models. And the black models will breed you the white with a black tick here and there. Hmm. Nice. We had a yeah. white cock Fantastic. one black yeah. tick. And today I'm breeding dark, dark black models out of mm -hmm. that same family. Yes, but me too. Do yes, you, some fantastic spinners. Do you have, do? You, go ahead. Sorry about that. That's okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, Rayford Lewis let me borrow borrow um, two of his hands. Now, c some of the problems are I'm not sure if it's because they uh, they bred um, the cockbird back to the mom or what's <coughs> going on, but we have problems with some of the hens laying eggs. Some of them won't lay. <coughs> won't lay. You know, I don't think it's it 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 it's. And I was told this before it, I started working with them, but. I got a fantastic black model in, in, in one of my kit birds right now, so I'm really happy yeah. I brought the, the other yeah. At, uh, yeah. the other red model in. Also, biker bird. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, I I don't think that's the that is the problem with the laying of eggs because, uh, nine, 2004, Heine Biker sent Frank the first shipment, and he said to Frank, "Does black batch cock? Whenever I see my kit." He's not holding together anymore. I bring this bird in and stabilizes the kit. But he gave us no pedigrees. And this cock was a two-year-old cock. And he couldn't fertilize one egg. Hmm. Um, what, what do you, what do you, uh, like, uh, do you, what do you feed your, your breeders? Like, do, do you feed 
all your birds the same or, or what, what, what's your feed now, program for your breeders? Look, look, breeders must get the best. I believe your breeders are your, your main birds that's going to produce you your next year World Cup team. So I give, we have very good feed over here in South Africa, different grains, because the racing uh, uh, fanciers yeah. are much bigger than what we are. Right. And our local, uh, we call them pet shops. They sell excellent grain. We have a young bird mix, which is about 50% mixed peas. We have a little bit of, 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 of Milo in. Uh, I don't think there's wheat in, there's China pea in, there's safflower in that mix, uh, but more peas in that. So I take the, 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 the young bird mix and we've got a roller mix, which is out, made with popcorn. So it's popcorn, Milo, sunflower, uh, and I take those two. When I feed my breeders, I don't mix the two grains together. They are separate in the loft. So I feed them 50-50. If I see they leave the, 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 the peas, then I go higher on the, the popcorn and take the peas a bit away because otherwise they will start, you know what, messing up your whole breeding program because they will mess the food. They become picky and choosy. So you got to keep your breeders also, you know, on their toes. Uh, what I do is, Every evening before it turns to dark, I go to the breeders and I take all the food out. No food left for the night. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow morning, I go to the lofts. I first clean the breeders. Every morning, clean my breeding lofts. Nice. Once I'm done there, I take the water troughs out. I either give them some vitamins, some probiotics, whatever I think they need today. And then I feed them in the morning. And not, not too much, because if you put that tray of yours with, with food for the whole day, <laughs> your birds are going to become bed feeders. They're okay. going to mess you around. Yeah. So, See, so you've got to keep them on, the, on, on, on their toes with the feet. And now in your loft, is, do you have uh, uh, wired floors or is it, is it with bare floor, like wood floors? Or what do you? Okay. Yeah. Where we are, we don't use much wood in the high fell. Towards the coast, yes, one must use because of the the, the, the salt in the air. Oh, okay. It, 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 yeah, it rusts the steel. But yeah, we got, I got steel lofts, which I built in 1978 myself. Uh, when we speak again, I'll take pictures or I can go in the loft when we do a, a WhatsApp call. My floors are cemented out and it's oh. very, very smooth. Very smooth. I have a 12-inch scraper with a broom handle on that. I stand, I clean those floors. It's clean as ever. Nice. I don't need a broom to sweep. That nice. scraper sweeps and cleans up those floors. Nice. You nice. with me? Yeah. But my kit boxes, they have some wire with a tray. Okay. And, and how many, how many uh, um, rounds do you go off your breeders? How many offsprings do you aim at, at breeding every year? You know, uh, uh, I like to go 60 every year. 60, okay, that's a good, 60, good amount. 62 kits of 30-30. 60, 30. 60 then at least. okay, 12, 12 pairs, 6, yeah, it's, okay, nice. Yeah, uh, yeah. And and do you, um, okay, w w when, you, when, you, when you're breeding, when, you, when you're weaning your birds now, do, do you, what's your process on training your young birds? Do you start off in training and flying each round separate, or do you wait to get them all bred out and start training them together at the same time? What, what's your, your program on, on from the point you wean the birds from the parents? Jeff, I take the babies out when they are 18 days old. 18 days, okay. Yeah, but I've got a different program what I do. Uh, my birds are pretty calm. So when the babies are about say 12 days old, they got feather already on and they can stand in the nest bowl. I take those babies, I put about two nest bowls, bottom of the breeding uh, uh, boxes in the corner, put all those babies in there. And within five days from that day, I take them away and they eat already. So they're quite small. When I home my, start homing my, my babies, they can't fly. I put them on the loft. I don't put them in cages. I lift them up. I, you know, that's all yeah. bull yeah. to me. So, so I put them very small. And every night they come down. And I do that for two weeks. And by the second week, I start to flag them up. Now, okay. can you, now why, why are you separating them when they're that young? Just for uh, curiosity. Okay. What's the advantage? Know, 
over the years, uh, 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 Dean, we've, we, we've learned so many things and by our mistakes, what we did. I remember with the, the American birds, I spoke to Bill Schreiber on the phone and I said, Bill, I lose a hell of a lot of birds because when these babies go up, they take to the sky. They've never flown before. And when they go up, I lose half of those birds. Yeah. His words was to me, I think, Kenny, you love your birds too much. He didn't. <laughs> he was polite. He was polite. <laughs> yeah. I would have said, yeah. I would have, I would have said to myself, you know what? You're doing it the wrong way. Get those babies up on that roof when they can't fly. And by the second week after that, put them up, cut the feet, oh. put them off, let them fly around the house. But uh, I, I call my birds down, uh, Jeff. Uh, I don't get overflies. I fly one kit in the morning, young birds, one kit in the evening. So they fly an hour. That's my flying time. So, but, but, but you start training them <clears throat> as you wean them or do you wait till your, all your rounds no. are? No, you can't do that because then you will have those, but the first babies, you know what, they starting to molt already and they are too big. And sometimes the older the babies get with these birds of mine, if you let them get too old, they will not fly. You must forget about flying these birds. They will not go up. I fly them yeah. while they squeak. Yeah. Put okay. them up. Yeah. I, the yeah. reason I'm asking you is, uh, um, you know, I'm trying to figure things out because uh, the bird of prey is kind of hitting me so bad. And and uh, I, I'm trying to figure yeah. it out to breed early, breed, <clears throat> and, 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 and let's just say like a, uh, in the beginning of spring, start flying them all together. But I guess I better start flying them all <laughs> as young, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you see with the with the birds of prey, uh, I'm a lucky man where I am. The hawk visits me quite often. Just about four days ago, he was behind my loft on the roof there looking for a bird, you know. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. yeah uh, and I saw this bugger, and I didn't see him, and the kid was the kid pulled up. But uh, these birds are psychologically strong, Jeff. Okay. Uh, when the hawk is in the sky, you know what? I don't worry. If I fly 28, all 28 will be back. Okay, I got you. I'm lucky in that sense. Yeah. And 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 from the from the point you uh, uh start releasing your your offspring, mm. um, do you fly them every day or do you give them day off? They or what? What's your fly schedule for them? Program. Uh, babies, you can't give them days off because they'll mess around. They need to get into the program. They need to know what you expect of them. Okay. If you fly them up hesitantly, they're going to give you all the trouble in the sky because you don't, they don't know what to do. I fly them every day. I fly the daylights out of them for those two, three months. Okay. And then after that, I might not even hold them in one day a week unless the weather is back because they are youngsters. I fly them the first year as hard as possible. Now, how how how's your 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 feed now that you wean them for the parents? Now, are you switching things around? Yeah, uh, I what I do is with the babies. You know, sometimes they don't want to pick up the piece, but if you, I take them away very small. I will I will send if you on WhatsApp. I can send you some pics so you can see. But uh, the first day they won't eat when I wean them and put it. I've got a Sputnik. I don't know if you know what that is. No, Sputnik. It's a Sputnik. Yeah, it's an English term that they use over there. It's uh, in front of my loft. I've got a one meter by one meter kind of a box that's made out of wire. Okay. Yeah. Like okay. a like a like a Avery type of thing. Yes. A, yeah. Yes. So when I'm in the loft, my hand can reach the back. I can catch all the birds. So I feed I feed my 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 flying birds in this this Avery. And and my babies. When they are small, they haven't been out yet. I put them in the aviary. I leave them for the day there. I put a bullet of water there. I put some young bird meat that's got milo, wheat, uh, 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 some peas in. Maybe the first day they don't want to eat. No problem. The second day, I will dunk their heads into the water so they can know that they have to drink water now. The minute they twitch their eyes, you know the birds are the babies are thirsty. Not? And the minute you put the head into the water, you will drink. 
Yeah. I will yeah. use I will use a young bird mix with all the mixed peas and stuff for them to eat because uh, I believe these birds of mine, when you start to fly them as well, that first three months I have to put them onto the young bird mix. It's a I call it good food. When they come in the roll, they can handle the roll. But if you fly them on Milo and wheat, some birds come in the roll. You know what? They drop out. Yeah. They're not strong enough. Yeah. They're not developed enough. Yeah. Well, uh, for those that are tuning in right now, um, um, just want to say thank you for for joining us. I'm Jerry Chicon, your your host. We got Daniel Foster, co-host today, and Kenny Tommy from South Africa, guys. Uh, uh, we'll get to a point where we'll start uh, letting uh, you guys uh, ask questions on the chat. And if you guys want to ask anything you want to ask to, to, to uh, Kenny Tommy, uh, feel free. But uh, wait for us to just go ahead and, and let you guys know on that. But Okay. Uh, um, Gary, I'm not seeing anything on live chat. You're not? No. I am. Not sure. Okay. Uh, I am. Maybe I'm not in signed in. Okay, yeah, I did. I am. You're yeah. good. Okay, Keep going. I, I see you the same. Yeah. Jerry, you must look at your watch. At five minutes, at eight o'clock, our electricity goes off and Wi-Fi is off. Everything okay. is dead. Okay. So, okay. so, um, let's get to um, okay, <clears throat> let's get to your the older kid right now. You know, um, you got your 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 competition team. How many how many kits you got going on with, with in competition? I got a cockbird and a hen kit. Only two. Oh, only two, and and what's the oh, age on uh, consists of on those birds? Uh, two years and older. Two years and older. Yeah. Okay, and and um, so your young birds, your 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 young birds, you're flying them. They're they're starting to show their their athletic skills. Mm -hmm. At what point do you bring them in and decide that they're gonna take place? Of, of of a bird in your in your in your competition teams. How do you how do you figure that out? I think towards the end of the second year or after the the first mold. After the first mold. Not before the first mold. So, after the first mold, fly the birds, see where's the good ones. Easy via team worker. You know, to to to, to they have a breaking kit, Jerry. I have a binoculars here. When the birds break, I don't look at the birds breaking. I look at the birds that's not breaking with the kit to see. And you got to select all the time. It's a list that never, never is fulfilled. The list carries on and on. So when I bring new birds in, number one, when I put that bird in, I'm watching that bird for a week or two. When the kit breaks, is that bird in the break? Okay. If he's not in the break, I mean, uh, uh, and say five out of ten times. You know what? I, I take him out. Do you do you bring one in and bring one out and put it in a stock loft? What do you? What's what's your? How do you how do you feel? Mm, do you do that? No, I, I I move it to another kit when 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 something goes wrong with my uh, with okay. the A kit and okay. I need a bird. I know I yeah. can bring that one back. Nice, yeah. nice. You you know we so got we're down. You're, we're, you're we're, we're down to five yep. minutes, so um, let's get down to uh, two weeks prior from competition. Competition team now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Those, how many cock birds and yeah. how many hens and how many birds are you flying? Okay, I've got a, 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 a old bird hen kit of about 24 birds. Okay. And I've got a 20 bird cock bird kit, but the cock, cock bird kit is always a problem, Daniel. You know, those cocks mess around, you know. If you want to quiet the cocks down, you need to cut them to bits so they, they okay. stop pronking and, and pairing and mating, you know, all that. So, you know. Gotcha. Uh, Do you fly I them together? Do you fly them together? I fly the hens to, uh, together and the cocks together. Okay, so you never mix them flying? No, I might bring in a cock or two. Yeah, I was just going to ask empty. you, have you ever flown like two or three cocks in there? Does it... Does it Trigger your hands. Have you found that to help her? Two cocks is not bad. Not more than that. Okay. Now, yeah. now, now, two weeks prior to, to competition, could you uh, uh, give us a, a, a detail of what you do as far as the feed and the fly? Let's say we'll start. We'll start <clears> off <throat> with the two weeks going into your competition, or, or or when? As a matter of fact, when do you prep your birds for competition? How do you do it? 
Okay, you know, most guys keep this a secret, Jerry. We don't, <laughs> we don't talk this thing out because this thing is, is going live we're, we're and everybody the... will know yeah. uh, my program. Okay. But nevertheless, I'll tell you. Okay, cool. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> the, the, the old bird kids are old birds, so they can sit, they, you know, as long as you want to. Uh, last month of the competition, four weeks, the first two weeks, I don't fly them, they sit. I hold them in. I don't overfeed them. I just keep them happy. Yeah. Okay. I just keep them happy. Uh, Ten days before the competition, that's when I start with my program. Okay. I start from ten days. Uh, I like, you know, I've got individual feeders here, Jerry, specifically for the competition kid birds, because when I feed open plan, you know. Uh, the problem is you have those smooth, smooth, smooth birds that never roll, that eats more than the birds that are working. I've see, you've seen that. Yeah. So I feed them individually. That last two weeks, I start on a Friday before the next Saturday's competition. And I feed them up. If I say up, they get about a heap, table, a heap tablespoon per bird wheat. Wheat. Okay. You're right. And Every day as I go along, I take away a teaspoon from that. And I'm coming yeah. down and down until yeah, I am. I, your wheat, is that red wheat? When you refer to your wheat, is yes. that red or is that white? Or is, is it no. soft wheat? Is it hard wheat? It's, it's, it's hard wheat. Hard, hard red hard wheat. wheat. I, I haven't seen your, your guys' wheat over there to, to, to surely say this is red wheat. Okay, Kenny, but real quick, it, real quick. Uh, we're getting close to the to the eight your eight o'clock mark. Uh, okay. How long does it take to you to 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 get back on? Uh, at ten thirty. Oh, at ten thirty. Okay. okay. So we're two two minutes. So let's let's get as much as okay, we can. Okay, Gary, what we can minutes. do? Okay, I can do something. Yes. Uh, when the lights go off, we'll cut off. Yeah. I'll go outside. I've got a generator here, and I can connect the generator, and we can have power on the okay. laptop. Okay. Yeah, and come back on on the same invite. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think okay. we can do that. All right. So, so let's so, let's, so, let's go on un until okay. we, we go get ahead. cut off. Go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah. Continue. Okay. I uh, Friday is the previous Friday before the next Saturday is the competition. All right. Yeah. Not the Saturday after the Friday. The next one. So I start with a heap tablespoon of wheat per bird and I come down until the Tuesday. On Tuesday, I'm on a teaspoon of wheat per bird. Dang. I'm going to tell you something else. <laughs> yeah. The problem with your kid birds, there's 20 birds and you know, you don't have much control of how much they eat. They could eat a couple of grains extra, some eat a little bit less. My aim is to get all the birds on the same page. In other words, our vehicles have got a reserve tank and so does the birds. Right, right. If your bird's reserve tank is still full and you're breaking them down and they still fly an hour, you know, the reserve, the reserve tank is messing up your program. you got so to you, get the you, reserve you're tank. You're breaking them down a little bit then. Get that reserve tank out. So yeah. all 20 of your birds is on the same page. Right. All of them. Nice. So how long do you wait before when they say they come down? How long do you do you wait before you actually feed those birds? I mean, uh, about 10 minutes. Like once they once they, 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 they trap in, I leave them. I clean. I do something else, you know, get the water going, clean all those. And once I see they're ready. But if I feed in my individual feeders, Daniel, then I don't need them to wait because every bird gets his own plate. His own meal. Now, 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 the way you're feeding right. them right now, the way you're feeding them right now, is that flying your birds every day or are you resting them? You know, wh where are you getting that? You know, look, we just said now the first two weeks of the month, rest. we're resting. Yes, rest. The last two weeks, I start with the Friday, which is eight days before the competition. Eight the days. next Saturday is competition. Yeah, okay, yeah. So I start to break down up to Tuesday. But fly every day. I fly them. I fly them. And when it comes to, 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 to Monday, they are real hungry now. And I need to watch the birds. If they're too low, I'm going to lose these birds. Yeah. You with me? Yes. So yes. I've got to read the kit. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. You got to read your kit, and if this kit tells me, hey, mm. I can't fly on this heap teaspoon or half tablespoon of food now, I will not change the program. I will rather lock them up. Right, right. So he went. We lost him right now, guys. Um, he's gonna go out and get the generator going. He's gonna, he's gonna uh, uh, join us again. Um, let me see what we got. Uh, so we we're, we're, we're gonna wait for him to. Okay, we're we're gonna go ahead and wait for him to. To join in again, but anyways, for right now, I want to say thank you to everybody that that that's joined in this that this this um, tapped into our first live episode of the roll call. Um, I'm trying to change things. We're trying to go not only in 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 the U.S. But worldwide. Hey, bring this hobby together, um, sh- where we could share our knowledge. Um, one of the things we need to do, guys, is, is support this program right here. It, it's, it's a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of effort. So, you know, what we're, what I put together is the uh, uh, Pigeon Broadcast on, on Patreon. Go on Patreon, look up Pigeon Broadcast, and, and support us, man. You know, become a member, and there you will be able to see all the documentaries, all these interviews, just like this one right here. Um, so... Um, please join in. We're, we're gonna have uh, some some type of donation uh, going on here, where you guys want to donate anything, would we'll, we'll help out. You know, it takes a lot of work, a lot of time. So I want to be able to go ahead and travel, do more traveling, film more 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 uh, footage, get more documentaries put together. Um, you know, we're we're making it happen. So thank you, everybody, man. Round of applause for everybody. All right, uh, Daniel. So, what do you think so far, man? About the this interview is, is fire, huh? <laughs> oh yeah, it's awesome. Cause how how come he's working with the same stuff we're working with over here? You know what I mean? It tells <laughs> you something. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> same for exact. Sure. You know the colors even. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So he's got. Uh, that's interesting. That white goes back to the uh, the the Bradford. I didn't know that. See, I'm learning. I'm learning stuff. I'm asking questions because I know a little bit about them. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, no, yeah. and and you know that's that's the thing, you know, um, we 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 have imported these birds from these areas, you know, South Africa, UK, and but when do we get the the opportunity to to you know pick their brains about the birds? You know, what I mean, I mean, I know that we just like you, you you you've imported these birds and um, you got to the point where you you've spread them around. You know, what I mean, but. What do we do with these birds now? You know what I mean? Yeah, well, I I think I'm on my third year with them. Mine come down from K- Kelly Applegate. Um, now this this last season, I brought in so, uh, a a hen hen from uh, Rayford Lewis. Um, I started producing really good birds when I brought in uh, one from Ted Mann. I brought in some down off the daughter that Ted got. He had some of them. Ted called them super performers, and then so. You know, I started playing with them, and they were they were exceptional A-frame rollers with tight feathering. Um, the little lake coming in, a um, little hard to get in the air if you don't stay on top of them. So yeah, you got to you you got to learn your way around them a little bit. Um, they're easy to fly. They they like to fly a figure eight. I mean, um, and they're not not so temperament to the weather like some of the other families I'm flying. Yeah, um, nice. So that's a huge plus. Yeah, so now yeah. I, I know we got into uh, um, I had to skip the, the the questions and stuff like that and get it into the competition because of his time, you know. Um, but now hopefully he gets back on here. I just messaged him right now, told him that we're waiting here, we're, we're waiting for him to get back on here, and uh, we could give we could go even deeper, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to join in on this live chat so I can see, but I'm having a hard time here. I'll get it down. Yeah, you see, that's why, uh, you know, we kind of got to get it more, a little bit more professional level. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, yeah. if you're, be a little green if, at first. If, if you're, you're yeah. interested in, 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 in uh, you know, joining me on, on, on hosting it, you know, that'll be great. Get yourself a little, uh, uh, soft light, you know, get, you know, get it, get it, get it, uh, 
uh, put together a little bit more better for you out there, you know? Yeah. Yeah, um, I, I'll definitely join in when I can, that's for sure. I'm yeah. a very busy man. I got, you know, I got work, church, family, like everybody else, you yeah, know. Yeah, 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 for sure, man. Birds me, take up most of my time. Hey, me, me, <laughs> hey, me too, man, and that's one thing that, you know, a lot of a lot of guys don't, don't see man it takes time to do this man you know like right now oh, yeah. right now right after this right here I, I'm, I'm headed out to work you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? me so, too yeah and then tomorrow we have one too right tomorrow right. we're gonna we, who are we gonna yeah. interview tomorrow uh Hannes ross rossow yeah i believe how you pronounce it yeah, yeah. so so, so. Hannes is a very good guy very knowledgeable guy ben um ben a really good flyer uh i think he's taking a second over there i can't remember it right now offhand i had covid for a couple of weeks so my brain's not working really well yeah yeah so so uh, he'll he'll tune in tomorrow same time um it's uh 10 o'clock arizona time we're gonna go ahead and have hannes here and that's gonna be pretty great uh we're, we're gonna we, time no time limit on that one so it's all good you know uh, um so I want to say uh, a little shout out, uh, Blue Lagoon, Tipperloff. Uh, thank you for joining us. Tony Hatoum, Danny Miller, Eric Later, Eric, how you doing, my friend? There he goes. Uh, da- uh, so uh, shout out to all you guys out here. Uh, we're waiting on your audio. Are you there, Kenny? Right. Are we Perfect. back in business? We're back in business. That's great. <laughs> okay. okay uh, great. Uh, just a minute here. So do we have a time limit right now? We now we can go on. I think we can go on. Okay, sounds great. Sounds great. Okay, so we're we're in a in a we, we competition birds up. <coughs> so if you want to keep on going, you're you're talking about uh the the wheat you're giving them the wheat and uh um so so you're you're flying them you're flying the birds you're giving them wheat and if they start showing you that they're deteriorating a little bit too much. You say that's you will not change the feed, but you will start resting the birds. Am I correct? Yeah, I will hold them in for a day or two because maybe there's only two days left before I start to rest them. Okay, Mm -hmm. you got it. Yeah. Yeah. So I suppose on the Tuesday or on a Wednesday, when I'm down to the last lowest ration, I feed them up with good food. My good food is a mixture of the young bird mix, which has got all the peas in and a little bit of popcorn, carbohydrates, you know, you you need a little bit of that as well. And I call it loading. I load them on their two. And and you load them and and, 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 and while they're resting too, if you have to rest them? Right. Now, on the last day of fly, I would say, or if if Monday they're deteriorating and they are too low and they're rolling too low now, then the kit is telling me, if you fly me again, we're going to roll on these roofs. So I lock them up for that day or okay. two days. And then Wednesday, I load them. Okay. As much as they want to. And and they'll be flying when? Saturday? No, yeah, we're flying Saturday, but yeah. on Wednesday, yeah. no fly. Load them, lock them up. Okay. Nice. Okay. Thursday, no fly, no feed. Only water. Oh, Okay. Friday morning, I go to the loft. I go speak to the kid there. Look at them. Yeah. Their behavior. Give them a talk. <laughs> yeah, give them a pep. And if I see they much relaxed on the purchase, I walk away Friday morning. I'll come back Friday evening at five o'clock. Right. Nice. And then they starting to look where I am. And all I do then. It depends on the weather also, Jeff. When there's a little bit of a wind, you need a little bit of Milo. And we'll, get we'll, them lo- Milo gives yeah. lift. Remember that. Milo lift. gives what you said? Lift. 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 Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It, g- yeah. it gives them that little energy, extra energy. And, uh, they give them that extra and they, they, they go a bit high. You yes. see. Okay. 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 And I either give them, if, if I look at the weather program, if I see the winds are going to be maybe 15 kilometers, I don't give them wheat, I give them Milo Friday evening. Milo fly. And do, yeah. do you, do you uh, keep the water there? Yeah, the water stays there. I oh, don't what? mess around with water, man. You know, it becomes, 
too complicated. The easier and simpler you do it, the better it is. Yeah. So just I, just just roughly, Kenny. There now you're yeah. talking. What what are we talking? Twenty four hours, thirty hours, uh, without feed. When you when you're you're looking up because you said in the morning if they're not meeting you at the feed tray, then you leave them in there. So, right. so uh, he, how that's now you're at the twenty four. I just want to say make sure I'm on the same same page. That's twenty four hours after you've fed them, right? So, so, so is it nope. is it is it? You, are you looking the same thing as a visualizing them as what you see in the, how the way they're acting, their temperament? Uh, yes, I read the kit when the okay. kit is setting. So let me go back to Daniel. Okay, uh, Daniel, when I feed them up Wednesday morning, I load them. Wednesday Thursday morning. morning, the same time, call it ten o'clock. It's twenty four hours. Okay. Okay. Twenty four. Yeah. Then so you may right. you may even go into so you may go another twelve hours say or ten I hours go, after that. Yeah. I go into Friday morning gotcha. ten o'clock, which is forty eight hours. Okay, I just wanted to make sure I understood you so, correctly. And you said you said Friday morning when you go in, you see them like if they're on their purchase, you come out and you come back in the the evening. I come in the evening. Yeah. I come back and then I don't overfeed them with either wheat or red corn. I might I might give them ten grams per bird. A, a tablespoon equates to fifteen milligram. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. Now, 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 ten, five, ten grains per bird. Are you feeding yeah. them separately, or what, yeah. how do you make yeah. sure? De definitely separately because I need these birds, all of them, to be on the same page. And how do you do that? What, what do you do? How do you do to get them f to feed separately? Yep. I've got, I've built, I've built these separate feeders. I think 1991. So I've got, I've got to show, I've got to show you the. the I've got to show you how it looks. So each bird sits in a separate compartment and outside there's a small a canary dish there that I put the food in, a tablespoon or two tablespoons that can go in there. And every bird eats. So I've got 15, I've got 15 of these individuals. Oh, so I put okay. 15 in, I feed them. By the time the first five is finished, I put the last five in. I'm on my 20. Nice. It does take, it, it takes a couple of minutes, Jerry. Now, yeah. when you're referring to red corn, now you're now are you speaking of Milo or are you talking Milo? Milo, yeah. that's okay. Milo. Milo. Yeah, we call yeah. it red corn. You call it Milo. Right, right. I just wanted that way the viewers know what you're now, talking now about. Now, do you do you Mike. like when you're preparing your birds? Um, do, do you have more than <clears throat> twenty and decide what to pull out before, or, or 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 when you start feeding this, when you start prepping them prior to competition? Are you got the 20 birds? What you looking at? The Friday before the next Saturday competition, I might have 21 day, not more. Okay. You know, you extra birds, you might take the wrong bird out, Jerry. You might take yeah. your leader out there. You know, it's always, the, if you have the correct number, I usually stick to my 20. I don't need to put 21 okay. in there because it's an old bird team. Right. And which ones, which, which team do you, do you see? That, that that works better and and why and how what what's the the, the difference on the performance were from the cocks and the hens because the hens are like you said a little smaller than the cocks so the, does the difference on the size and the weight no. of the bird it make a difference i don't think it's a size it's just because of the their sex hen birds are less problematic than cock birds Cock birds are dominant birds. They want to be king. You know, yeah, you have yeah. that bloody problem with them. But if you have a cock bird that can give you two rolls a minute, then you've got a bloody good, good bird. You know, you need to, to, to look at this bird and, and decide, you know, is he safe in the air or is he rolling low? Those are excellent birds. But, yeah, you know, yeah. if they are quite quite stable. You know, the do cock you, birds. Yeah. Do, they you see are, them? do you see them, um, those birds that you're talking about? Do you see him at time row in the loft? No. No? No, no. You know, once you start seeing birds roll in the loft, man, you, you're tilting the scale towards the hot button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. red button is the hot button. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're starting and you might breed roll downs. Yeah. Because yeah. once birds have that uh, thing of rolling in the loft, you know, easy to roll down. But... Right. You got to work the birds, you know, I've worked 20 years with them. I don't, I've got less birds when the kids say, 
if I lock the kit up five days, I release my A team. They don't roll when they go out, Jerry. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see they what are you safe. Say. Yeah. And when they come down, they d- and land, they don't roll. Yeah, because I notice uh, like uh, sometimes, you know, the most active birds they'll sh- shoot up to the to the team, bust, shoot up to the. T- they're very active, you know. And uh, um, I'm not saying like there there'll be roll downs, but you know, you could even see that activity in the. And I was wondering if you could see that activity in the loft itself, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you know, when you have it in the loft, you know what, you got to you, you got to keep your eye on those birds, look at the parents, so that you know what, you, you mustn't, be, you know, if you're going to breed a lot of those birds that roll in the loft, you're going to have some problems in the kit. But uh, there's something else that you need to, to breed into your birds. You get voluntary spinners and involuntary spinners. Yeah, yeah, well, they, they exactly, yes. No, yeah, right, yes. now that bird yes. that you're talking about that yes. hits the kit and he goes, that's an involuntary roller and that's what you want to breed. You want yeah. to have involuntary rollers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If you have voluntary exactly. rollers, you know what, you better to get them to perform. Right, yes. I can, I can go back many moons ago now, Monty's kit. Monty stroke those birds, they were involuntary to the extreme. They were breaking one break after the other, easy three breaks to four breaks a minute. Nice. Those are involuntary rollers. Nice. Now, now, easy. now, now, you're you're uh, in. Uh, do do you practice uh, like any other theory out there, like um, uh, darkening the, the 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 kit boxes or a- anything like that prior to competition, or or you just keep it normal, the same, Jerry? Yeah, you know, when I was in, in California by Jerry Egan's them, you know, Jerry yeah, yeah. Had, had a lot of boxes there and they were all closed up. Mm-hmm. You can't see the birds. You don't know what they do. You feed in that kit box. You know what? You have to make sure the door is closed because they can pop out over your head and go back and flying again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to watch the behavior of your kit birds. My kit boxes are quite small, but they're very efficient. Uh, the Englishman won't like them. They're one square meter. Okay. And there's 30 box perches in there. But they, oh, they've they got a door and they've got the steel frames that you can look through the loft. There's enough light coming through. Yeah. Now, I, I remember when I spoke to Robert Parker in 1997. He locked his, his World Cup team into the... He locked them up in the outhouse, in the box. I don't know if you remember that, mm-hmm. Daniel. You remember? Yeah, that? The, it, yeah. I, you know, I w- I wasn't in the competition scene. This is my third year, I think. But yeah, okay. They put them in a dark box to try to yeah. right in the get those cocks yeah. to yeah. The, the, cock birds it, to, it, 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 the theory to that, it's like they it makes them come out more active and and like inner. How you say it? Uh, uh, kind of like uh, you know what it means. You induce stress on the birds. Yes, yes. If the yes. kid is stressed. They right. will roll, but yes. but you know what? At my age now, <laughs> I don't want birds that I need to make do all these tricks. I want to stroke them yeah. with feet and clean water. Might be the first week of the yeah. month if I think I need to treat them for salmonella, coxy, canker. Mm. I'll treat them the first week of the month. But so, after so that, do you, do you treat do you treat them as? O- only if they show something or do you treat them like every year? No, no, I don't treat much. I, I'm very heavy on the probiotics, which is for the pigeon's gut and system. Probiotics keep all diseases away, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I do that. Uh, but if I see, you know, droppings that doesn't look nice and I see a bird is under the weather, uh, I tr- I'll treat them for a couple of days. Okay. For the the main uh, the coxy and the salmonella and the typhoid and the canker. How how um how you're just wh- you're just using like a five in one when you treat those kit birds. Yeah, we've got very mm. good. Yeah, we've got a very good vet here called Met Pet, and he's got very good products. Nice. But I have I, the same stuff. Yes. Yeah, you know. Yeah, it's be- it's best to keep them. Uh, uh, their their immune system strong to to defeat anything you know what i mean absolutely now to 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 keep the immune system strong it's not the antibiotics 
it is the probiotics, probiotics that give the birth. Yes. Yeah, probiotics. Yeah. yeah, that is the and that's a natural product. It's not an antibiotic, which which is penicillin or yeah. mycin. Or all How often things, do you, know? you give that to them? I uh, not much. Not no no man. Not much. Okay. So Only if I see. Pretty much. Once, pretty pretty much. Keep once a month. Yeah, pretty much mm. like uh, we got a uh, Tony Hatoon from Canada said, "Keep it simple. You gotta keep it simple, right?" Absolutely, yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Now, now I the know intro, the intro immune over here is what what works the best. It seems like when now when you when you're introducing probiotics, um, what uh, what what are you using? Um, yeah, what brand? Uh, uh, myself over here. Yes. We have a local brand here, yeah, but very bad. Look, we have international brands from 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 Belgium and from Germany, but the, the local brand I know the the veterinarian very well. We have every second week a breakfast with all the old timers, and sometimes he joins us and then he gives us a lecture on on medicines. But we use his medicine and it works like a bomb, you know. We've got the the the, the medicine. Okay, so, uh, sometimes I like to treat for one single type of disease, maybe only. An antibiotic for canker. Okay, do you, uh, are only, you are you is there a mineral binding clay in that? Do you know, a, a mineral binding. Yeah, in your in your um, in your uh, probiotics. When um, see over here, we use Entromune. It's got prebiotics. Well, I that's what I use. Prebiotics, yeah. probiotics with uh, mineral binding clay. Yeah. Now that's a natural product you're talking about, which I also use Entromune and Medimune. That's just to protect the birds from getting sick. Yes. Now, do you, do you see um, any of these uh, yes. uh, medications uh, uh, tear the birds down? Uh, you know what I, I mean, I'm flying birds over 50 years, Jerry. And in our heydays, in the beginning of the Birmingham roller, like 1976 going up to 1997 uh, before World Cup, yeah, you know, we, we, I, I did a lot of things and, and I could get that kit rolling nonstop because we had 15 minute flies back then. But, and if you put them on an antibiotic and every morning single, uh, a fresh dose, by the fifth day, you will start seeing that this kit is under stress and is rolling like hell now. But if you start doing those things, your birds will be dependent on medication yeah, yeah. to perform. Yeah, and you got you got to be careful, like especially doing it <laughs> prior to competition. Yeah. You know. <laughs> you yeah, know, yeah. They it, they like using uh, the warm out gel over yeah, here. Yeah, but... prior to competition, they start yeah. using. All, I'm telling you right now, <laughs> I had that this year. Uh, I saw a little bit of canker on on yeah. on, uh, on two of my birds, and then I was like, you know what? I got stressed out. I was like, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna medicate everything. I met in my kid bird, my competition birds. Yeah. And damn, them things wanted to go up and come right back down. I was like damn what the heck's going on you know so that's why i asked you this question like you know uh do you feel that 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 medication will stress them out and no and the medication will interrupt the the time of flight it might interrupt the height of flight the height yeah the yeah, antibiotics yeah, yeah, yeah. but it shouldn't interrupt your height of flight going up five minutes coming back if birds go up five minutes come back they might be very very thirsty might be oh, you yeah, know okay yeah yeah, yeah. so kenny easy. i got i got a question for you not to interrupt um do you do you use any type of electrolytes or anything when it's warm does that have you, have yeah, you... yes those are natural products electrolytes are very good it tends to push the kit a little bit up high it also make the kit roll like crazy uh -huh. but when i give them these things uh, uh, uh jerry i don't fly them Okay. I don't want okay. to, I, yes, I know yeah. they will perform. I'd rather lock them up, give them the antibiotics, because I know by the third, fourth day, the skit will be breaking one break after the other. And most of the guys, I think they, Jerry Egan's flu on oromycin, uh, you, you, you become dependent on those antibiotics. And what I have experienced, eight out of 10 times you flop, only two times it works. It's not something that will work clockwise every month. You are guaranteed that when I give them uh, this antibiotic, this kit is going to smoke. It doesn't okay. work all. But the only way that you can know this kit will work if you go the natural way. Yeah, yeah. You and, smoke and, them. Uh, you, 
with well, feet. Now, now going back, um, we kind of sped up to the competition because of your time. But going back to the birds um, that you breed out and wean from the parents, um, when wh- what's the earliest development that you see f- on their performance? What age are the birds from the point where you where, where you uh, 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 wean them from the parents and start training them? Uh, I take them away from the parents at 18 days old from date right. of etching. Right. 18 days. Yeah. They, yeah. They got to survive on their own. You know but, what? The, yeah. The, they become the best soldiers if they all survive that 18 day period when you take them away. Right. Right. They won't <laughs> fly away. They will stick to the kit. They become good birds. But if you want to fly them, I call it when the babies has got beard. Okay. You keep them too long in the nest. Yeah. It's yeah. already big. Yeah. And the birds, I, you know, I see <laughs> lofts around here and I, I tend to, to shout the, the fence here saying, what are you doing? Look at these big birds. Are you killing your breeders? I don't want to kill my breeders, Jerry. Oh, yeah. The sooner I can take and, those babies away. Okay. And, and when do you see your, the performance in those birds? At what age? Hey, Jerry, now it's a problem. I might face a problem, but I'm keeping my eye on it. They start to come in at eight weeks. Gee, that's early, man. <laughs> now, yes. now, now that they, yeah, okay. So you're talking about it might be a problem. What are you talking about? Maybe to get too hot or what? what? No, no, no. So I, I've had early developers yep. that could stand the test of roll and go. Right. There is some of them that drops out. They are too young. They come in. They frequent in the kit. I push them with, 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 with electrolytes. I push them with, with carbohydrates. You know what? They, they don't go sell them. Yeah. I give them yeast, yeast powder over the feet. Yeast is something that, that, that stabilizes your kit. If they're overactive, a little bit of yeast over the, the wheat, you know what? You tend to, 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 to calm them a bit. That's the word. I mm. can't calm those birds. So... I've got to look and breed less of those early developers. But at eight weeks, 10 weeks, 12 weeks, they roll like old birds. The quality wow. is there, Jerry. Are, are they, do, do you see them? Uh, do you see any uh, faults in them, like uh, being bumpers or, or not, con- don't, not having control of their depth or uh, uh, anything like, um, you know, coming out of the kit box uh, uh, too hot to were hit? Do, do you see anything like that? not coming out hitting the roof uh once they go into the kit and they they start you know they lag behind the kit okay nice, nice. you see many a time you find those birds many a kit that i've seen the birds break from the back oh okay well, so, and so those you prefer, birds that break from yeah do you prefer what middle and front or what's the best that you see that you want to see you know Jerry, if you can get the break from the front, you can score 18. You can score 15. Oh, yeah. If you get breaks from the back, you're on 5, 5, 5, and 7s all the time. Right, right. So You so, can get your yeah, 10 the, the from front, the center. The front would be more of a, of a, um, like a combustion of the whole team instead of this, this, this front team can't see what this team is doing. So the, if, you, the, if they're busting from the back, the ones in the front are keep on going. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. My birds, when they break from the back, the front birds are waiting for the back birds. They don't fly off. Okay. Hey, let, let me let me uh, uh, go into some of these comments. They're starting to to uh, um, ask questions. Uh, time. Uh, okay. La, you got Daddy Miller, a cockbird that rolls two times a minute would be bred for breed for him, and would you need him to? And would you need him to be more active to reach the stock loft? So he says, a cockbird that rolls twice a minute, would you breed from him or would you need him to be more active to reach the stock loft? He's perfect at two times a minute. He's perfect at two times a He's minute. He's perfect at two times a minute. Yeah. Uh, the breaking birds that works in a team, I call those breaks synchronized breaks. Uh, they all in sync. The birds speak to one another. If he's in all those breaks, and sometimes your kid can give you three breaks, Daniel, they can give you three breaks a minute. They can yeah. give you four breaks a minute. And they fly a bird 
and then they give you one break a minute, but never are they quiet for a minute. This is what you need to achieve with your kit. Okay. If they fly five minutes and you've got three breaks, the frequency are not there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, me, J- JV, J Vang says, uh, um, how deep is he rolling and is he staying with the kit? I don't know what I mean by that, but uh, well, let's okay, go, let's right. go, to, let's go to 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 a, a similar question on your on your birds. Um, are they all similar on the depth, or do you have birds twenty, thirty? I mean, right by the, at this time of 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 uh, cultivating and and generations yeah. of cultivating, where are your birds at right now? How what's the depth on the birds? Uh, the depth on the birds is about twenty foot. 20 foot okay yeah and i'm happy with a 20 foot but on the odd occasion you do get the bird that comes out 30 foot and not not deeper so, you know a deeper than 30 foot you know it's not a competition bird because you will when the kid breaks you will go further than the kid and you will distract the judge because the judge will look at this bird that's going deeper so what do you say uh, uh 20 uh 20 feet is like a 1.5 second or Two seconds. Twenty or? feet could be one point eight seconds. One point seven seconds. Yes. Okay. You know, if they twenty twenty five foot, usually, when birds <laughs> roll individually, yeah, they give you twenty five thirty foot. But when they go in the break, yeah, they shorter. Yeah, yeah I they started. I, what I started doing here is I have a, my stopwatch, and if mm. I have my eye on one bird, I I start clicking, clicking. And checking the, the the time click click each time each time for for a few days to see mm. if it's consistent of what he's doing and 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 i'm starting to have an understanding on visualizing the depth of the bird by by the time you know that's why i asked you what do you what time do you think is a 20 20 uh footer uh, and most of them are on the same depth now uh heine biker was yeah was it 2013 or 2014 I don't. I can't remember one of those two years. Mm-hmm. And uh, he came to my house, and I flew him. My 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 my, my stock my stock birds, which is my stock birds now, but they they already gone past the twelve year. Yeah. And he said to me, when the twenty minutes was up, he said, Kenny, if you flying this after fifteen years, you're doing better than me. And Frank Baker said to him, how can That's Kenny do better than you? He hasn't won even yeah, yeah, yeah. the World Cup. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So, so Kenny, like... I, got, I got a question for you. Yeah. Uh, um, so as 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 young birds, you're, you, you know, you're, you're flying them and everything. So how, how do you call a young bird or do you do you call young birds? And then, and then you know, you, a lot of times you don't want to call during the moat. I know that, um, obviously. So uh, are you calling – at a year and a half, two years, when are you getting rid of those birds? And are you just selecting from the best of the group and then you, you get rid of the rest at the second year mark? Uh, explain that to me, would you please? Okay, if you say calling the birds, uh, calling them down to land? No, calling, getting rid of them. Calling, calling. No, no, okay. no, not, 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 no, not getting under land. When I say calling, calling. I mean eliminating yeah. them from your, okay, from your program, calling, Co- calling with, this, yeah. with a U. Yeah. Yes, uh, you know, if, if a bird doesn't, it doesn't come right in the first year, and he gives me trouble, that baby or young bird, and he's, he's out of the kit every time, or he rolls and he turns left or right, you know, I'll feed him up, I'll rest him a couple of weeks, I'll put him back in the kit. If he persists, I call him. After, okay. that's when I'm getting serious with them when uh, I yeah. put them up, those young birds, because <clears throat> it's now the second problems. year up. And from 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 that team, yeah. And after now, the second, yeah. Go ahead. And, and and then and then when you when you okay. okay, you're flying your young your young birds. Those you are flying together, right? Cocks and hens, or you separate them right from the start? No, as babies, you don't need to separate them. Okay. As they come out in batches, you fly them. You know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Only when they start to show sign of pairing and so forth, then you need to start moving them. But I, I, I've, I've learned that it's best to keep one team together for the whole year. Okay. Do not bring yeah, birds yeah. in 
Yeah. Do not take birth out to the A team because yeah. you're messing your young bird team up now by taking out your rollers. Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, hey, uh, guys, you know, uh, let's start asking some questions out there. I know we got some viewers right now. Let's let's ask them some questions, guys. If you guys really want to know, the, those of you that are working with some of the South African birds and, uh, you know, would like to ask questions, that right now is the time. You know, we got we got Kenny, one of the top, top flyers in South Africa here live, guys. So let's take advantage of this. <clears throat> um, do you feel uh, like we were talking about earlier <clears throat> on the birds being on one wing? What what do you think is actually the cause of that? You do you think it's it's it? You, do you see it more on the young on uh, young birds or older birds or does it matter? I mean, what what do you think is the problem? You know, Jeff, I've seen those birds. I flew them myself. They are genetically selected. If you select birds, I had a friend just just three weeks ago. He says, Ken, what do I do? These birds are on the right wing all the time. I said, I'm sure they are that strain. He says, yes. I said, that strain, you need to cross them out to get rid of the, the wing. But the birds that I've seen in, in, in America, most of those kids, they were on the wing, Jerry. Mm -hmm. They were flying on a wing. They were flying on one wing. Yeah. But, you know, it's so much enjoyable to see a kid flying the eight pattern. Yeah. Because give, give the eight just, pattern... Give, give me just a second. Give, give me just a second. Jerry, get, take the clicker and my keys, right? I'll take them out, sir. Sorry about that. I got, I got my son works with me, and uh, he's waiting on me. I tell him just go ahead. I'll, I'll follow him before after the the interview. <laughs> okay. But uh, okay, go ahead. Sorry about that. Uh, uh, those birds that fly on the wing, there's nothing you can do to change that, because yeah. what happens with those birds on the wing that I've seen, they fly on one wing. And when they break, the ones that come out of the break, some of them go left, some of them go right. They don't know where the kit is. It's a confusion. And that I've seen many a time, well, even with my Plona birds. When that kit breaks, they don't know where's the kit. The kit is gone, left and right. So, yeah. you know, those are the families that, that, that I suppose that has been selected. And the guys think maybe they like that, but I don't like that anymore. Okay. I've had that with American birds. It's much nicer to fly a kit. I'm sure the South African birds over there, they fly the pattern eight. Um, um, now, uh, another question. I saw uh, you recently uh, put uh, a, f a couple photos of your birds on, 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 on Facebook, and I saw one with the devil ears and mm. the other one with the split chest. T talk to us about that. I mean, I see that a lot in the South African birds. uh you, would you say that's caused by the, the, the speed of the bird? or I mean, what, what do you see? Because a lot of people, we know, if, when I post a picture of a bird like that, they'll, they'll, they'll go against it and say, oh, it's because of the moat. Oh, it's just because of the feathers. Well, give us a little uh, ins insight thought of you, of, of what causes that. You know what? Birds that roll like that is the cream of the crop. <laughs> yeah. Now, <laughs> now. You will only find that chest, that crested chest with birds that's got a great depth up front on that kill. The f if you have a flat kill, you'll never see an open chest. Because if you look at the kill of the bird in front, it's a sharp point, right? Yeah. Are you with me? Yeah, yeah yes. The yes. front of that kill is a sharp point. Yeah. The bird rolls over backwards. Yeah, yeah. The wind is cutting from the kill up the yeah. body. It's, it's, it's separating the feathers yeah. because of the sharp point of the kill. Oh, it makes sense. Yeah, I never looked at it that way. It makes sense. You will <laughs> never find a bird. You can pick a bird from the loft if you see that that bird is built right. It's got good tail flex. Yeah. And it's got yeah. excellent depth up front. Yeah. Because you know what? I, I see that a lot in my birds. And and, and, and you know what? It's, 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 it's it's any time you know any time that they're flying right and and and, and they they're just feeling it and they're just ripping it and they come down and you just, man and and uh yeah it's, yeah this yeah is they're, a they're, good, they're just, really easy to spot out yeah when you, when you got young birds coming down you can tell right away you got three of them the same yeah you, uh, yeah you just look at their chest you can see it I can. Um, we got a question right here. It says, uh, okay. now Daniel, go sorry guys, go ahead, if go you ahead. take those young birds in your hand, 
if you take those young birds with an open crested chest, you will feel that that keel is greatly, greatly depth up front. So more, it's more... not a flat keel like a duck. Okay. So, yeah. so when you say a flat see, keel will it's, be a it's, keel... it's a wedge keel. Uh, uh, when you say a flat keel will be a keel that's more Can down. You see my end? Yeah. Uh, a flat keel is more round and flat. Okay. You've got to get that that keel like a wedge. Oh yeah. And okay. those birds, those birds that you have there, you go and catch them tomorrow morning, and you will see exactly what I'm telling you now is nice, right. Nice, nice, nice. Mm -hmm. let, 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 that let, bird. Go ahead. Go ahead. Let's talk about the bird oh. with the devil ears. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That's velocity, man, that you see, you know, what those feathers are up. Because you must remember, when the bird spins very fast and tight, there's friction of the wind. That bird goes through the wind. And for some reason, the head, the bird is rolling from the head backwards. Are you with me? Yes, yes. A bird is rolling backwards. And the wind is pushing, the wind is pushing against the backward oh, yeah. spin of the bird. Yeah, yeah, I got gotcha. you. Are you with me? Yes, and that's yes. what you but you don't see many birds. You don't see many birds that do that. You know what? Yeah. I've got one or two with those devil ears, but I've got a lot of birds with a crested chest. Yeah. And those are the birds. Your yeah. excellent breeders. You take yeah. those birds to stock, they can breed you the same. Yeah, I like I like the way how you uh explain things. It, it it just makes me look at look at it as it's rolling and I understand a good way to to put it in, in, in a view to understand it, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? So um that's pretty good cool. um i got there's uh someone uh daddy Mi uh, miller says could kenny elaborate on what he looks for when selecting from the sky he said he only wants involuntary rollers and cocks to to roll twice per minute what else does kenny look for the seven the, inch the ultimate of any roller is <laughs> the, the quality of the roll what, what's the a speed good, of the roll? What's a good quality of the world? Do you do you, you, do, you read, read, do you read wing position? Yes, yes. They, they, look, if the birds are flying in front of you from right <coughs> to, to left, you see the side part of the bird. You can see if there's a hole in the side. But if the birds roll to coming towards you or away from you, you'll never see the hole because you're not looking at the right angle. Are you yeah. guys listening? Yes, yes, yes. Now, about the wings. You know, the best of rollers, if you look at those wings, they turn like fan blades. Yeah, yeah, fan blades. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah. know, if you take a bicycle wheel upside down and you turn the wheel until you see the spokes is going backward and forward. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's fan blades. I mean, you're on your way. That's that's but that's you, that's velocity right there, huh? So no, but so it, Kenny, it, it, um, when you start seeing secondary start to snap, now what is that? Too now you are you getting into birds that are too soft feathered, or um, do you know what I'm talking about there? Well, the where they start breaking their secondaries. Uh, no, you see what happens when birds are not rolling with with my standard. My bee's got a flat keel. He doesn't have the right tail flex right, because right. it's the keel and the tail flex that will give you the, the outside ball. Some birds spin. You see the hole in the center, Daniel? Yeah, but yes. other birds, the American birds I had, you see the outside circle of that velocity. Now, those are those super freaks where the edges of your primary flights yeah. create an outside circle. Do, 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 uh, uh, okay. You know, out here um, in the United States, they talk a lot about the apple body, and the apple body is more of a chested bird. What kind of kill do you think that bird has, the way you're describing right now? Exactly what I said to you. Great depth up front. It's got a tail flex. If you put the bird, what? can you see my hand? Yes, yes. Right. When the bird is sitting in my hand with the head facing this way, it's got to fill the cup of my hand. If the bird sits tight in the cup of my hand, that's the apple body that Bill Pinson was referring to. Mm, okay. You see. Do, do, yeah. do, do you feel that, because uh, I know the apple body, you got a bigger chest, tucked in wings. 
do, what, what what type of body style do you see in your birds? I mean, do you see more of the wings popping out a little bit further than the chest? Are they tighter in? What what do you what what when when you have that cue that you're talking about the tail you're talking about? What's the front looks like? What the wing looks like? Your wings shouldn't go further in. Then you Should... got big wings now, parachute wings. Okay. You got to have short wing butts. Short wing. You got to have. So they're tight have... against the the side. Yes, the against the side. The chest is out further than the wing. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yes, absolutely. And of course, the bird has got a good big back back muscles, strong muscles, and strong muscles around the keel because it's it's about muscle that the bird can determine the speed of roll. If he's got bad, if he's a fat bird, he can't give you a tennis ball roll. He's too fat. He's clumsy. Yeah. 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 So, so Kenny, now you said a lot of a lot of bigger birds came over at first. Now, now are your cocks in your hands hey, pretty uh, close uh, to the same uh, size? Uh, uh, what are, what Daniel, are they like? Uh, Daniel, an to answer other? it again because you kind of froze on our end, I think. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'm lagging a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm asking uh, as far as the size of the bird, um, the cock bird and the hen bird, are they are they really close to the same size? Um, is that what uh, you're uh, looking for in your the way you Daniel? bred your birds? If I I have a couple of cocks here, a good couple of them, that's the same size as my hen bird, seven inch. Now, to me, that's heaven in the pigeon world. But most of the cock birds are half inch longer than the hens. Some birds can be more than half inch, but half inch is, 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 is the best I can do with a bird. Not longer than half inch compared to my sizes, the seven and a half inch hen and the eight inch cock. But I have cocks that are seven inches. Now, here's the difference. It's good to have small and strong than to have big and strong. That's how I see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You don't want small birds that are weak. You want small birds that are strong because they need to execute that role with perfection. They need to roll, control. That's what you need in a bird. Yeah. Okay, so when you see a hen that's an exceptional spinner, and uh, when she's young, she's having a little bit of troubles, what we call switch wing in here, um, uh, uh, coming out of that role a little bit. But she corrects that when she gets older. Now, would you breed out of that hen? Or, you know, uh, I, I'm or against it, is, Daniel. You I'm against that inferior it. hen. Yeah, okay. once a hen switch wings, that I've, since the 80s, uh, were those old English birds. We had birds that switch wings at times, you know, one switch. But I think... You know what's a, what I think, what causes the switching wing? The bird is battling to open up. Maybe one wing is going before the other wing. That's why you get that flip of the switch in the wing. Mm, okay. Oh. Is, is, is that, you think that that could be something that, that could get fixed or just avoid it right off the bat? You know, I will never put that bird to stop. And if they, no, but you know what? It's a disgrace when, when, when fences come and look at your birds and you have one bird. <laughs> yeah. If you have, if you have, you have 19 good birds, but you fly one bad bird, they will destroy your whole kit. Your yeah. name goes. Yeah. You can't fly that. You yeah. can, you can fly it in your, your C team or your B teams for, for, for maybe for two, three months. If that bird doesn't come out of that air bird, you need to call it. Yeah. So do, do you do you concentrate? Your, yeah, in, in I have. Well, the reason I'm asking is I have an exceptional black badge, and uh, I, I'm kind of leery about breeding out her because um, her first year she'd have a little bit of troubles uh, when she hit those real rip fast, you know, fast spins. She would have a little bit of troubles when she came out of, out of the spin. So uh, my thoughts were not to breed out of her, but she's such an exceptional kit bird now. She's probably one of the best ones in there. But I don't want to. I don't want to uh, deal with that that problem later on down, down the road. The line. You know what you can do, Daniel, because she's such she's such an exceptional bird. Uh, Get a good cock that's got control, an excellent cock, small cock, and then you breed six babies of them and fly them. And the try moment them you out see here. one of the, yeah. if you see one baby flops wing, then you need to color because it will run yeah. in the bloodline. You will reproduce okay. them down the line. Yeah. So she it's needs like to birds. Be, she needs to be tested in the breeding loft. You can test her if you want to, but you know, if you have a lot of good birds, Why? you don't Why need even? to, to yeah. if you have a lot of good birds, you know, I don't mess around with birds like that. Yeah. Have you? Well, I, you... I, I've only. 
stalked right. I've stalked one cock and four hens so far, and then um, yeah, so no, I don't have that many good ones. <laughs> so, now, have, have you ever but, in your, in your breeding life have you ever uh, experimented with uh, uh, polygamy breeding? I've done that with American birds. I use one plona cock with the the Schreiber birds and all the other birds, and I flew fantastic birds. Nothing wrong with that. But now my nucleus is so small, it's around seven birds. Nice. Yeah. You know, nice, yeah. going back to, to one cock again, you know, might be too much inbreeding now. Yeah. Because they're already so close and the nucleus is so small. Yeah. So so you believe uh, uh keeping it the population small then, huh? Keep your your, your nucleus small. You know, to, you know, uh, to bring in an outcross, you might unlock many undesired traits. You don't know, you know, because uh, uh, the, the outcross that you bring in might be exceptional spinner, a sectional bird. But when you cross them, then undesirable traits come to the forefront. So, and also bringing an outcross might give you exceptional rollers. They might be F1s. If you yeah. breed F1s, those F1s will not reproduce. Right. They're only good. They're only good in the sky. Yeah, so that, stay that, away that, from that hybrid vigor, you know. And get, yeah. You get stay the... away from that. Okay. You know, you you need to concentrate on the bird that, that that's working for you. That yeah. flies a great pattern eight. Uh fly yeah. not high. So yeah. if that, you were to go forward with an outcross, what do you think the best uh what 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 do you what would you do? You take it back back to its dad or a parent or a or a half sibling i mean what would be the best way to go forward with that outcross okay uh, that's not an outcross if i understand you correctly daniel if i want to i if i want to pay the, the grandfather to the granddaughter are you are you are you referring to that yeah or well say i bring in say i bring in a new bird yeah and i got an exceptional kit bird and now i now i want to get i i want to see if there's something else that there yeah. I can tap into as far as, uh, uh, okay. uh, I get locking you. the gene pull up tighter. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Do you, I've, would you, would I've you seen suggest that. a, a half sibling? Um, uh, uh, outcross always works well with the inbred bird. That's I've seen. Yeah. 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 The more inbred the bird is, you bring an outcross, you'll breed, maybe you'll breed the F ones. Yeah. You'll yeah. find you'll find those exceptional spinners. How far how far would you go with with let's just say like like it happened to me and and I had to figure it out. But uh, how far would you go like if you go out like if someone was come to you and they get one pair and that's all they have to work with and they breed that pair. How far would you would you recommend to go in the breeding program? Would that be uh, uh, just a considered a, a inbred breeding there? You know, Jerry, if it's if it's a family like mine and you take a pair which are related, I don't think you can create you can create many good birds. They might roll, but they too close. But if you take a pair that's non-related from my loft, but they are related far back, maybe like 20 years ago. Yeah, well, that pair you can get very far, but I think one pair is not sufficient. Three pairs. Ideal with three ideal. pairs, you know what? For the next 20, 30 years, you know, don't need to bring a cross in. Nice. 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 Um now let's talk about uh I like a, a health of a pigeon. Do you feel that there's a way to <clears throat> to kind of look and um Kind of like handle a bird and look for for like a you know kind of like a doctor. You go to the doctor, they check your heart, open your mouth, and they check for your immune good immune system, cardioactive system. Is there a way to look for that in a pigeon? Look, the only way you can see when a be a pigeon is about off or sick is in the eyes. In the eyes, yeah, it's puffed up. Eyes are weak. You know, there's something wrong. Same with our children. Same with people. Where do we see you sick? I look you in the eyes and I can see you're not well. Yeah. I, I your respond. body doesn't dis- your body doesn't display sickness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sounds right. No, I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, there's uh, you know, I, 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 I'm a true believer that you know, breeding good, strong, healthy pe- pigeons is what could could 
keep up with the with the activity or the performance you know now Absolutely. now when you're putting your p- pairs together kenny do you do you uh balance co- color balance and then what about eye color um what what do you got in your family you got pearl you got bull i'm assuming in orange um do you you, do you look at balancing any of any of these traits or are you or are you just sticking best to best? You know, what, no. what what's worked for you? What works for me is not best to best. I yeah, best to best if it's a black and a and a red, that's fine. But two reds together, two blacks together, you know, in the end you will have more one colored birds. Yeah. I'd like yeah. To, to to balance my colors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. If I put two reds up or two blacks up. It's for a specific purpose to go back to a specific line to get stronger bloodline of that line. But otherwise, I balance all my colors. Uh, yeah, the eyes. Uh, I have a lot of bull eyes, and most of my bull eyes are my best birds. Okay, right. But, yeah, we we, we put... just we just had Eric later ask that uh, ask Kenny about eye color. But yeah, go ahead. But <laughs> but it's good to 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 mate up. You know, a bull eye with a pearl or an orange. Or a pearl eye with an orange eye, uh, you know. Then you maintain your color because the birds carry also, you know, one gene from the mother, one gene from the father. So if that that bird carries a, 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 a one gene of a bull eye, she will. Th- they will throw bull eyes for you as you go along. Hmm. But I tend to 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 not to make that. I don't like to make two bull eyes together because then you know what those ba- babies they've yeah. got strong genes for bull eye only. Do do you get crack eyes? I do get crack eyes and I don't like a Jerry. No, I uh, no. in the eighties, we had some, ex- I had two brothers, two red grizzles and crack eyes. They were exceptional spinners. But my experience is when those crack eyes come in the role, they are very unstable. You know, a crack eye is an undeveloped bull eye. Okay. That's what a crack eye is. Okay. It's an undeveloped bull. Okay. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good that you're talking about uh, um, the color patterns because um, I've seen on a lot of lofts that they no. let they let the recessive red take over or they have a lot of yes. black cells. And to me, it, it's just so hard to distinguish what bird is what in the air, you know. You're breeding you into a corner once that starts. You got to, you got to have a game plan with your family so that you don't eat a wall. Uh I don't know if you guys, okay, you Jerry, do you do, do you know anything about Bull Schreiber? Bird what? Bull Schreiber. No. He was from Portland, Oregon. No, no. never heard of him. No. Is it? You guys should ask the old timers about him. The, the the guys in California, they would pay back then in 1970 maybe $1,000 for one bird that comes out of his loft. Now, he was an old man. Wow. He was <laughs> he was 70 years old in 97. Uh, he's passed on now, but that old man, you know what? He gave me a lot of knowledge and a lot of advice. And uh, he was a very hard man. Uh, he didn't want to see the pigeon fanciers of America. You know, guys would go from America to, to Portland and he would turn them away from the gate. You know, he, my, I don't know, was he a butter man, but he was full of nonsense. Uh, but he had great birds and his birds came from the turn of the 19th century. That's when he started with these birds. And he brought only one cross in to shorten the legs, to calm the birds, tighten the feather. And he's never done anything else. So you don't need to, to go for an outcross. You know, people, yeah, Philip lot of fans just said, if I can get that, cross it with this. But where are you going with the offspring? Which way are you turning to the to the are you just bringing him in to get a pair of babies or four or six babies and you use those babies with your family and you kick him out? Otherwise, he will take over in your loft. Yeah, yeah. Just like, uh, um, you know, another uh, uh, of, uh, color factor or, or modifier, it's like grizzle, you know, grizzle. You got yeah. any grizzle in your family? I've got, and you won't believe me. You know what? I battle to breed the grizzle gene besides the red mottles. The black grizzles, uh, this year, 
I've bred quite a number of them, and I'm so happy that I've got some grizzle oh, yeah. amongst my birds because I don't have that color. But <laughs> yeah. you need to be careful with the grizzle gene because that grizzle gene will take that all off over your yeah, watch. Yeah, it's like the recessive red, you know? Yes, yeah, but it, it, you need I, to I have a game stand, plan. Yeah, I can't stand yeah. it. Like I, I, I need no. to, I need to, it, as it is, in a cloudy day, it's hard for me to tell what bird is what, you know? You know, all yeah. birds are not okay. you know recognizable on a cloudy day, especially yeah. even the black Any, mottles, the black white flies. Uh, what know. what what yeah. kind of uh, percentages are you? What kind of percentages are you getting out of your pairs? You know, as far as you you raise you raise ten babies out of a pair, out of you know, say one of your hit pairs. What what's a really good percentage? You know, are you getting three good ones? Are you getting five good ones? Um, elaborate on that for me, would you? Daniel, nowadays now, the last 10 years, the last 10 years, uh, if I breed six, I'll get the first year, three or four will come into the role. And after the mold, maybe one will come in. But the year thereafter, the last one comes in and he's my best bird. Yeah, well. I don't get rid of them. If they're good kitting birds, I don't need to get rid of him. I keep him in the kit. Yeah, and then and uh, People, what about? Oh, okay, sorry about that. Go ahead, continue. Yeah, so so you're so you're saying you're getting like one out of six, out of a good pair. No, right? no, no, no. I'm saying out of six birds, definitely four. Oh, okay, nice. nice. Oh yeah, yeah. So and, you're, and you're and the well, next... you're above fifty percent. How, how, how many? Then... How many? How many join the uh, are qualified to join? your main team on the first year do you get that you could say you know what these this bird is outstanding i don't do that jerry oh, it's no? too big a risk because when i start to work the a team i hammer the taillights out of them and who's the first one to give in the younger bird that younger bird yeah and and you heard the bird you must remember you can mess a good bird up by doing this, what I'm telling you now, you don't you don't hammer young birds the first year. You don't have, you keep them just on a normal diet. Don't overfeed them so you can see they're rolling. I don't mess, I don't like to fly yearling competitions, Jerry. The second year with that team, then you will see now. I've got great breakers. They working well. Like last year, I didn't fly the young bird. In our region. I was lying third. If I flew the young bird, I would have been first place. But I didn't fly the young bird. I didn't mm. have uh, uh, good enough young birds. But on the nationals, uh, we had very, very bad winds. Our winds sometimes 30 to 40 kilometers an hour. And you can imagine with rollers, yeah. my location is not the best. I'm on a hill. To the east of the hill is the valley. To the south of the hill is going also down. Yeah. The birds need to lift in order to see them. What's but we flew. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. We flew. Thereafter, we flew the interregion. The regions against each other. The top two of each region flew there. Okay. And that so, morning. So, Kenny, uh, t Tony Hatoum's asking, do you lean more towards uh, proper rolling or speed? It's got a combination of everything. Uh, uh, uh. Daniel, you got to have good kitting birds. You got to have birds with good quality roll. You got to have birds that goes with a break. Uh, what I hate when I see some of my birds, when the kid goes out, the A team, you have those three or five individuals. As the kid goes out, they busy ripping in the kit. That's the worst thing that I experience. I don't like that because those birds are deterrents. They're messing up the kit to set up for breaks. They're disrupting them. Yeah. yeah. They're disrupting them. And, and, yeah. and many a time my birds goes out, there's no individual. There might be one or two as they go out, but within two minutes, the kit settles. How do you, what, what in, in a good day, in a good day, um, if you have a well-qualified judge going over to your house and you're flying pigeons for them, what is like a good typical score that you, you your birds would 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 would, uh, would dish out as far as in a competition or whatever? You know, what I mean, a, a club fly. 
I mean, what is your average that you see? Jerry, you know, the, the problem we have with judges, many a time, many judges cannot judge synchronized breaks because he cannot count. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You see, you get me? <laughs> yes, But yeah. If you get birds breaking, three from the left wing, three from the right wing, two from the front, two from the back, yeah, 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 he yeah. can count them. Yeah. He can count them. Yeah. Now, a math a mathematician. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So, so, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I flew a kit here. We have a legend. He's still alive. Topi Janssen. He's very old now, but he was one of the guys that went to England in 1973. Yeah. And he went over to Racing Birds, but he's back now with the rollers. But he's just keeping them to keep himself busy. And when he came here, year before last, he said to me, he's never seen a World Cup team in England. That could break like the team I flew on that day. Nice, nice. You see, yeah. yeah. But we're talking breaks. They 17 would break, and three from the right wing would be above the kit. Okay. They snap. Yeah. Now, you now so, I got, I got a question for you. Um, so, what do you consider waterfall? Is, yeah, maybe I'm too critical on that because. If if I see birds rolling all over the kit, it puts me off. But we have World Cup rules that says five and more simultaneously. Yes. So yes. you got to stick to the book. So what is what does that mean? Five or more? When when could you? What does five or more mean to you? For me, five or more is a cluster coming out from one corner or from one position. Mm. Cluster so breaks. I've been working on that. Does that break, break? Does that break need to exit and get back to the team before it hits another break that's scorable, or could that break come down, exit, and another one come down? Could that be scorable break, or, or I mean, in your eyes, are, will you be able to score this break, exits, and another one comes down? Um, would you be able to score that? Is that scorable? Does that mean five or more? Or does it mean when the kit gets back together and breaks again? One thing you must remember, our World Cup rules hasn't been revised since they published it. Yeah. So it's open to uh, uh, interpretation. But if the kit is flying together and you get a break of, of, of five or seven, yeah. and when they open up to go back to the kit and the next bunch come, yeah. you have to score that bunch. Okay. Because that's not a waterfall. Yeah. A waterfall is a, a, a couple of seconds apart. That's yeah. waterfalls. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So if you if you get to visualize the next break, okay, if you visualize the first break properly from start to end, and the next one breaks, you're able to count that because some people are saying like, you know, you don't know whether this team is going to come right back up or might be an outbird within that to where you can't count the next break. But as long as it exits right and is, and, and it's, and it's going back and breaks another break, you'll be able to, 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 to score it. Yeah. You see, you can't speculate and say, you know what? Maybe they would have turned out left or right. If you haven't seen it. You got to judge what you see, Jerry. So yeah. if that first lot comes out, they open up and then the next lot comes out. That's a second break. Second break, yeah. You follow, But you get you some follow. judges. Yeah. You get some judges that doesn't score the second break. How do I've you, seen how, how, do, how do you... Um, Especially World Cup judges. How do you evaluate the multiples, like uh, quality and role? What does that consist to you? I mean, does that have to be I like... A, like the, the, does that have to be that... That the that the um um kind of the same quantity or the same birds are always rolling a certain depth and where where do you give them a 1.6 or a 1.3 at whatever multiple and and, and, and uh, on uh, on the multiples as far as the quality and depth. Okay, uh, I tend to simplify this. Uh, you must remember. The, the two factor was established for 20 birds, right? That two factor. So the two factor means 10 out of 10. Am I right? Okay. If you want to convert it to a percentage now. Yeah, okay. The two factor is 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now, that two factor, if you give each bird a half a point, 
times 20 births, it will give you your two factor. I don't think, I don't think that if my, my biggest break is six births, you can give me a 1.5. No, if it's half a point a bird, it's 1.3. That's your biggest break. If you have your biggest break is 10 birds, that's a 1.5. You uh, with me? Yeah, 15. Because half a point is allocated uh, per bird. Okay, so 15 birds will be like a 1.7? Yes, it should be. And then the 20 birds, is, but they'll have to be doing that consistently, right? They Yes, the judge has got to look the overall of the kit. The overall, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, overall of the kit and the quality of the kit. You cannot give, if you get a 15 break, you get 1.7 and you know what, the wings are open. Yeah. So, so would you would you evaluate that once once you once you gather up all your scores, right? Would you how, yeah. how would you determine um, like divide it or whatever to say um, the the birds were more like on the twelve bird break consist of that right. rather than how would you determine at the end at yeah. the end at the end when you're when you're gonna give the multipliers. How would you say, how would you look at it and say, okay, th the majority were anywhere around nine to 12 birds that were breaking. You had a few 15, 16, 18, you had a few five, six, and seven, but the majorities are, were around nine and 12 bird. How would you, how would you put that together to determine what, what multiplier are you giving them? If the quality is good, and the quality, you know, meets my standard because every judge has, has got his own standard. You know, yeah, they've yeah. got their own idea. So, but, you know, I'm flying birds a long time and I want to see quality rollers, as I said. If they close up that old kit goes there, you got to see fan blades going. So that's a good start. Over the 20 minute period, your score sheet will show you how many bigger breaks was there. Not 110. And all of the other breaks was under 10. You can't give him a 1.5 because there was only one of those. Yeah. But if he's got four or five of those tens in, definitely qualifies for half a point per bird. Okay, gotcha. Kenny, now, um, I think we got more viewers right now. Can you explain the yeast thing as far as slowing down their frequency again? That way, some of the viewers, um, I know they can look back on the podcast, but there's some on live chat. Um, exactly how how often do you use that yeast and and how how do you use it you two days before um you know i i'm new okay, that's just, new just to me repeat exactly huh okay just just repeat your question again because i i didn't hear you so well the yeast as far as using the yeast to slow down their frequency did you hear me that time yeah uh, it doesn't slow down the frequency, uh, uh, Daniel. It just calms the bird, birds a bit. If you have those overactive birds, oh, okay. I try to yeah. I try to get them. You know what? Uh, feed them a little bit up, so I boost them a little bit. If I give them yeast powder or a yeast tablet, you know, uh, so that they can roll Actually, less and break now. with the kit. Let's let's go back to the. Uh, um... Uh, we're talking about it on okay. the on the on the judging. Um, so we're talking about the, the 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 multipliers. When 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 the the twenty minutes are up, will you call the multipliers right away, or will you determine it when you get the score sheet and you calculate the 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 the, the scores? When would you determine? the multipliers is that something you already have in your head as you're you're s s scoring through the 20 minutes or whatever time 16 minutes whatever time they make you know the first five minutes is always you know what uh to watch the birds before you call time so you look at that first five minutes see what the bird because many a time that first five minutes they're not so good they're not so good quality the guys used to say, if they warm up a little bit, they become better. And after 10 minutes to 15 minutes, I mean, if you can see now whether this kit is good enough for a 1.6 or 1.5. You can tell. Yeah. Okay, so Kenny, how do you balance when problem, you're seeing... The big... Go ahead, go ahead, Kenny. 
Sorry. Go Can ahead, go Kenny. We, our Hold on. The, our reception is not so good. Let me just go to the Wi-Fi. One minute. You're, you're, you seem good right now. <laughs> man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to wrap this up here pretty soon, man. Yeah. I, well, I was going to ask him, uh, you know, when he's seen a seen a real quality kit spin like a 1.6 and then they deteriorate towards the end of 1.4, so how he had worked that out. Yeah, yeah. My son's over there at work Okay, right let, let's try. My Wi-Fi signal is not that great, but yeah, repeat that again. Yeah, so if you're seeing like in the beginning, the beginning 10 minutes, you're seeing like a 1.6 in quality, and then you see it deteriorate, they start to – go downhill and and uh you're seeing a one four so how how are you gonna what what kind of uh, quality are you are you gonna give them in that fly if you were judging as i said it depends on the number of birds that are rolling together and what is the highest number that rolls at a time you can i can only determine that if i see what's your biggest breaks and how many times did they throw those big if they if they as as, as, as jeff said they give you a 10 they give you a 15 you get a 17 in there. Well, that is the the upside, the positive side towards a good quality factor because 10 and above is good. But you know, if you have 115 and 117, you know, and with good quality, uh, I won't go with if 17. If there's 117, I can't give him a 1.8 because you know it's not it's a one break. If it's every time a 15 plus. Well, that's something else now, but with quality. But if the quality differs because some birds, if they are but too frequent, play another couple of minutes to gain strength, and then they will give you good quality breaks again. Okay. So those factors you need to take into account be before you can uh, put down, you know what, uh, by the end of the fly, you'll know what the quality is on these birds. Nice. You're not going to sit there with a score sheet and try to reason now with yourself. You should know that. Kenny, I want to say thank you. We're going to have to wrap this up. I'm sorry. We're going to have to cut it short. But do okay. you think that we could do a part two on this? Yep. Uh, Kenny, thank you very much, man. I really, I really enjoyed this. That was awesome picking your brain, brother. Do you do you feel we could do this again, uh, part two here soon? Yeah, we can do that, Jeff. Yeah. We might just pick, you know, a time where we don't have a cutoff because now also yeah. my Wi-Fi signal is a bit bad. I can't hear you that good. Okay. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's good. I, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta go to work. I'm, I'm <laughs> I gotta send my need, son up yeah, there. Yeah, I need to go too. Yeah. So, yeah. um, I just want to say you thank now, you but, so yeah. much. Um, a round of applause for you being here. Um, I, 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 th th this right here is something oh. that, uh, uh, um, you know, it's here in the archives. I'm doing it for the for everybody to tune in. Um, mm. I want to see thank you so much. I want to tell all the audience thank you for, for uh, tuning in. Visit us on Patreon, uh, uh, Pigeon Broadcast. Support, support what we're doing here. Um, okay. Yeah, support your local clubs. Support the your, your NBRC guys. Uh, everything that has to do with the pigeon clubs, mm. the pigeon hobby. Get in the flies, bringing new people. This is this is a hobby that we need to keep on going and make yeah. it strong. And and that's my mission. And and uh, so you know, I want to say thank you for your for your time. It's okay. Thank you so much, guys. It was nice speaking to you. I hope I made some sense. You know. Yeah, and and yes. I'll definitely uh, I'll definitely get with you, and we'll pick another time, maybe here in uh, in a week or two. We'll do it again. This is a really good. I I, I we I mean, there's a lot of more more things that I want to pick your brain in, and uh, I you know I can imagine that now you will have a question in front of you. <laughs> you know, make sure you, know you don't what? forget this. This, uh, will, this will we'll do uh, next time. Uh, uh, maybe you could get a pigeon and have it there so that we could uh, visualize yes. more of what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you're going to have me out there with yeah. the measuring tape measuring <laughs> okay. my birds yeah. now. <laughs> okay, thank you so we, much, everybody. Thank you so much. Yeah. And uh, and tomorrow, as a matter of fact, thank, Kenny. Thank you, guys. K Kenny, tomorrow we're going to have another one. It's going to yeah. be with uh, Hannes Russell. Or Russell, that's the, I don't know how you pronounce it. But it'll be the same time we started this one. Yeah. If, if you want to tune in, I'll send you, I'll you, okay. send you, I'll send you the link. Yeah, definitely. Okay, so tomorrow, you send me, yeah. tomorrow guys, at 10, 10 in the morning here, Arizona time, 
we'll be we'll be uh, uh, doing another one. We're gonna have uh, um, uh, 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 Mr. Roswell here as a as a guest. We're gonna have uh, Daniel as a co-host. Okay. You, you're, you're gonna join in, Daniel. Yes. And then we'll have Keith London on here as well. So it's gonna be a good one, guys. And and thank you again. Okay. No problem. Thank All you, right, guys. Man. Cheers. Good day. Okay. Bye bye.